All right. Um, so welcome to Well, There's Your Problem, a podcast about engineering disasters, which also has slides. I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. I am Alice Caldwell Kelly. My pronouns are she and her, and I am looking forward to a second extremely concise and focused podcast. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> she said overconfidently. <laughs> well, you know, Italian, last words. Italian politics is very simple to explain, so I don't know why this would be a problem. <laughs> I am Liam Anderson. I am at Old Man Anderson on Twitter. Uh, my pronouns are he and him. And uh, yeah, we have a guest. Yeah, yeah. Do you, yeah, you want me to hold on, guest? Yeah, yeah. Hi. Go ahead. I'm guest. Um, I'm <laughs> hell of a name. Hello, <laughs> guest. I picked it myself. It Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guest, and I'm an alcoholic. Um, no, uh, uh, my name's Noah. Uh, I uh, have a history degree, and that's my qualification for being on here. I am on Twitter, uh, and uh, it must be nice. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry we, that we can't... do not use the show Twitter for ourselves. Shut up. <laughs> well. To be fair, to be fair, Justin, if if you had simply signed the cancel culture letter, you wouldn't be canceled by uh, <laughs> by Twitter. You would be a free speech warrior. I will replace J.K. Rowling as the next <laughs> beloved character to become transphobic in order to get back on Twitter. <laughs> the most insulting thing is just that like these people have lived their entire lives in these weird bubbles where they've never been criticized before, mm. and the whole idea of cancel culture, I think, is honestly just. A result of like famous people finding out people really fucking hate them on the internet. No, you're being mean like, to me, Barry Weiss. <laughs> that should be illegal. Oh also, God. like, there's, <laughs> uh, there's real anti Semitism, and being mean to Barry Weiss is not it. Barry Weiss and also got to date Kate McKinnon, so it's like, you know, oh, why is she complaining? <sighs> No, don't 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 go there. I'm I'm in too much pain emotionally from knowing that. And I'm, uh, I'm glad I barely know who these people are. <laughs> all right. Well, after this is done recording, I'm going to sit you down with a picture book, and we're going to learn flashcards. You just, you just got know. like a children's picture book with like illustrations of everyone who signed the cancel culture letter. Is, where yeah, did, I'll, where I'll did you draw, require I'll, this so quickly? I'll draw the incredibly offensive caricature of Barry Weiss myself. <laughs> be like, all right, if you're a conservative woman who had a bat mitzvah in the 1990s, you probably got a gold chain with your Hebrew name on Is it. Is this like yeah. an Eddie Murphy this stand-up routine? You, <laughs> it's like you're an asshole. Um, uh, no, it's, 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 sorry, it's, uh, no, it's, um, it's, uh, what's his face? Um, uh, Larry the Cable oh, Guy, what? it's like, you might be, etc. Um, you know, that's, that's that thing. No, hmm. that's, that's, uh, that's, that's the other guy. That's the guy, the guy who, the guy who went up in the jet fighter plane. Jeff Foxworthy? Uh, no, no, it's the other <laughs> other guy. It's not Jeff Foxworthy. Oh, um, the other, oh God. the other Randy blue Quaid? collar comedy tour are guy. You, are you are you trying to talk about uh, Bill Engvall? Bill, even Bill Engvall, might, yes. You might be a redneck as Jeff Foxworthy. You dumb. I knew I was it? right. I knew Mark, it. I, I, I don't know who any of these shit. I know. Roz, Roz is a coastal not from elite. The South. Roz is actually. I am from a coastal elite. North. I have seen his Unless... palatial holdings in Boston. That's <laughs> wow. <laughs> No. Well, here's the Listen, thing. Listen, all these people are kulaks, right? <laughs> Jeff, well, Jeff Foxworthy was like a, like a programmer oh, hey, for Dad. Microsoft. That's true. <laughs> I would like to say I am a West Coast liberal Hollywood elite, so I don't know who any of these people are. And the fact that you're, uh, you know, the fact that you're asking me to learn is uh, is really really hurtful so, to me. Yeah. And so so here we have like... Bill Engvall's plane. <laughs> Yet another fine <laughs> aircraft in the Spirit <laughs> Airlines fleet. <laughs> what what you're looking at here is a plane, and it yeah, doesn't look so good. No, there's, it seems to be missing. Oh, was that for weight reduction? Uh, yeah, yeah there's, there's put a lightning kit on my fucking yeah. airliner. No, listen, if you take off the exterior of the plane, then the air can go through it. Which enables oh, yeah. it to fly. <laughs> it's a, it's a COVID oh, yeah. thing, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Then you don't have to breathe in all those all those harmful uh, whatever. This is my, this is my convertible <laughs> airplane. <laughs> this is my, do you remember the one time we saw the uh, the Mach One uh, seaplane? The at Willow what? Grove? 
What? Yes, the the, the seaplane. Ross, I don't you like whatever this is. Will, the Willow Grove Air Force Museum. Is, is, they had is, a seaplane yep. that was supposed to go mock speed, but it had a nasty habit of destroying itself instead. That is rules. that the weird one that's just north of the city? Too beautiful for this world. Yeah, you and I went there oh, and yeah. then went to a brewery. Oh yeah, I remember that. Hmm. <laughs> what if we combined two famously safe things, power boating and uh, jet aircraft? I'll only yes. fly in I'll only fly in a convertible seaplane if it's just like, you know, like the spruce goose, but like <laughs> <laughs> like with the oh, top you really, sheer. You can, really feel the, you can really feel the wind through your hair. You could you, you know, you could be like you could be like any number of wealthy, wealthy executives and just like fly your plane at sixty miles per hour through uh through various wealthy neighborhoods of LA. <laughs> You know, that's mm, a convertible yeah. so I love to get a Cessna, yeah. It's the, <laughs> yeah. the, the thing that kills surgeons. Um, <laughs> oh, I want a Cessna so fucking bad. <laughs> I don't even care, man. Like, I just, I, I just want to be one of those guys. I'm going to wear aviators like an asshole. Oh, God. I'm going to have a bomber jacket. With the little no wings well, sewn I'm onto the breast. Be Joe Bi- what I'm saying is I'm going to be Joe Biden. Yeah, I mean, Liam, <laughs> Liam, to be fair, to be fair, there is actually a very th- a thriving subculture of people who, like, both own Cessnas and also restore like World War II era fighter oh, jets. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're just um, like and, you're just restoring like a BF 109 in your fucking yeah. hangar. And I have to say, every single one of those people is just so fucking cool. Like, in, in, in like kind of like the like the your uncle who like has a boat kind of way. They're really cool. Oh, why? Uh, yeah, they're they're pilots. Yeah. They have okay. to be cool. That's true. My my food is here. I'll be right back. Yeah, no worries. Okay. okay. We, so, we will wait for you to get back, and then we will start the news. The news. Oh, the oh so it's just news. the news now. It's not, okay. I, I, I didn't know whether we were... Uh, I was making we were... a family-friendly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, this very family-friendly podcast about yeah, 81 yeah, the, people talking about oh, yeah. their disaster. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait, Alice, can you do the news, man? <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Newsman, newsman, newsman. The problem is I gotta scroll through the drops. <laughs> You're a fucking newsman, Don. I ever tell you otherwise, you punch me in the face. Yeah. What you need is one of those like old, you know, like the soundboards, mm. you know, that they used to have like made out of flash. Yeah. Well, the know? problem is yeah, yeah. on on the actual thing, right? I have to do everything through software because the only um, button I have four buttons, so I can have I can hotwire those, right? I can just have four mm. drops that I can just press. Yeah. But for everything else, I have to scroll through an enormous list of drops to get to uh, I don't know moan dot wav. Which or uh, the fucking like the Mario theme tune, but with a guy going bruh in place of every note. I mean, you know the you know the. There we go. I'm chilling. I love this. I cannot imagine an occasion when you would need that. I love this. It's just now. Like, just now. now. Right now. No, you would. Right you will never need that drop in real life. <laughs> Uh, there's no, you don't know. There's no reason say, why you would ever need stop that. Stop insulting people's lived experiences, Roz. <laughs> what Alice. you need is like a drop board, but it's like you know, it's just a million billion buttons. Maybe you got some buttons mm. up top, like it's an airplane. Yeah, I, I want, yeah. I want like a special drop where I have to like turn two keys at once and like flip right. a button cover up. You have a big fucking lever for one of the drops. <laughs> you have like a pulley, a, a crank wheel that determines exactly what percentage of the drop gets played, and it like springs Ooh. back in the position yeah. afterward. For some reason, inexplicably, yeah. you can see like reel to reel tapes going around in there. <laughs> have you ever there's seen a, there's a, a photo wax player? cylinder? <laughs> a mm. what? A photo player. It is a player piano with a wide variety of extra sound effects attached. Oh yes, I um, have. Yeah, yeah the, which for the podcast of the day. Well, yes. to be fair, Alice, I feel like you need to become a radio DJ and just have like one of those. Like, welcome mm. to one hundred and nine point seven. You're listening to WTYP. <laughs> <laughs> when you think about Jesus. it, when you think about it, a, a a a silent film is basically the opposite of a podcast. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that, you right. know. Anyway, dialectics. Let's get back on topic. Back on right. topic. Yeah, that's yeah, right. All right. Un- unbelievable. All right, let's go to the news. The goddamn news. Well, turns out everybody hates cops. 
Wow. Yes, mm. as it turns out. Who could have Th- guessed? That they, they made uh, Philly police apologize for being assholes and tear gassing com- people in a confined space. I bet that was uh, a fucking, like, really, like, learning and growing bodies in spaces apology, <laughs> and not like some fat shithead coming up and being like, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, we did our jobs too good. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it took him. It took him like a couple weeks to for anyone to see any consequences because the New York Times finally reported on it, using a bunch of footage which was freely available literally everywhere. And mm-hmm. then the, the police commissioner came out and apologized, and the mayor came out and apologized. Even though they were like, "We needed to do this for public safety," like the mm-hmm. the, the day it happened, and like. You just almost caused like a massive crushing. Yeah, incident. what did what did they actually do again? You could have killed forty five people with this easily. Hmm. Tear gas a bunch of people who are trapped on either side. Oh, yeah, it was Jesus. like down in the hey. trench for I six seventy six. Seventy six. Although to yeah. be fair, this is like the city of this is where Joey Baloney, uh, the uh, you know, Bologna's the pop strong. Cop. Yeah, yeah, that's true. The yeah. pop cop <laughs> uh, that all the pops love um, is from. So you know. Uh, Joey and Tony Baloney. Um, yeah. Good, good stuff. Who was it who resigned yesterday? Who was maybe partially Ryan responsible? For, yeah. What, what was his position? Managing director of the city. Ah, I see. I see. That sounds like something corporate as opposed to something municipal. Yes. I don't like that. Yes. No. It's he, like replacing yeah, the mayor with the CEO. If you don't run the city like a business, then what are you doing, right? Yeah, that's, it's, it's that's a business that's oh, very right. good at like forcing people into a freeway trench and then tear gassing them. I run the city like a business, and I get bought by private equity. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I just, which I mean, you know, it's kind of basically what's happening. But I mean, know. that's basically how Daly ran Chicago back when Daly was mayor. So uh, good stuff. Um, da- I'm salty Daly about was this at least as a funny, corrupt. That's true. Mm, and he also but, did have the decency to get hit by a car door on a bike, which was very funny. Um, so, you know, impossible to say if bad or good. I was about to say, a man of the people. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was very good at bike lanes. Uh, okay. Uh, on, in, on other news, Oops. Uh, uh, open it's it up not, is going not well. A second peak if you don't do anything, so it stays the first peak. I actually I was about to say, yeah. I actually have um so uh I am I am currently podcasting, first of all, uh land acknowledgement from uh stolen Tongva land. Uh but second of all, I am podcasting from the city of Los Angeles, where our dipshit uh middle management mayor decided to open up this thing called LA Alfresco, which was like oh, every boy. single business is now allowed to do like outdoor dining just take over a section of sidewalk which like Can okay. we have la outside today right so so the thing is the the thing that you have to understand is that california has passed a constitutional amendment that basically made it impossible to levy a property tax that is like reasonable part- to benefit old people and developers mainly but as a result oh, yeah. most of the revenue of los angeles and uh, a lot of the state revenue comes from sales taxes and the thing is we refuse to cut our $3 billion police budget by more than $150 million because Michael Moore has to continue to fly a stupid little helicopter above my house at 24 hours a day. Um, but uh, <laughs> no, Every citizen of Los Angeles County gets an LAPD helicopter to fly <laughs> over their house. That's actually <laughs> what the situation I'm living in because I am, you know, not to, not to, you know, undisclosed location and all that, but like I am in a position where uh you know there is just a helicopter over my house every couple sure? of hours are you sure that some cops didn't like creep up you on your roof and like paint like hey fuck this guy in particular on your well, roof <laughs> entirely possible there is like a there is like a like a very suspicious dude that just sits outside of my apartment all the time so it's probably bugged but oh um, definitely so Process anyway, yeah. I wanted to I wanted to call out uh, you know I wanted to say thank you to uh, you know spineless weasel Eric Garcetti for uh, you know hmm. deciding that in order for his very good developer friends uh, to continue to make money and his various police friends that he's completely scared shitless of uh, mil- uh, like thousands of Angelinos have to die so that's cool we love our cops we I love, love our law enforcement I mean it, it could he's be worse still- right like. Cops, cops cannot be trusted with helicopters. 
<laughs> Cops cannot be trusted with helicopters, but at least you never had the thing that Glasgow did, where they just fucking crash a helicopter into your city. Uh, <laughs> I mean, fair, but like, you know, we did have the thing where they shot a bunch of people to death in the 90s uh, with the help of the National Guard. So, you know, that's... Uh, although that was Swings back when I was, born. I was not born, and also I've lived in Chicago most of my life, which has similar problems, but... Uh, by the way, Garcetti is still promoting L.A. Al Fresco. He's like, go home, don't go to bars, don't go to gyms, but also L.A. Al Fresco is still <laughs> happening. <laughs> That's the same shit Phil is doing, where they're just like, just because it's open doesn't mean you should go, and then like keeps all the shit open anyway. Well, we have like, Al Fresco. Do? We have it, and like our cases are generally staying pretty low, right? Um, you know, it's it's between like 60, 150 cases a day in the city. I mean, we're not doing too bad. The problem with our alfresco dining doesn't seem to be so much, you know, um, people are getting killed by it or getting sick from it. The problem is that they're leaving no space on the sidewalk for people with disabilities to get around. And when they've tried now once or twice to do alfresco dining where they close off a whole street, like on uh, East Pashunk Avenue, um, the business owners just cannot restrain themselves from pulling guns on black people. As you say, um, yeah. kulaks. Yeah. Yes. To be fair, yeah. that was on 2nd Street. Was it on 2nd Street? Is, I thought that was yeah, on Passion. Like, no, it was at uh, the Infusion Lounge, which is a shithole. You don't and say. And the guy who runs it, or at least used to run it, was nothing but a huge dick when I worked at the liquor store. So I hope that somebody, you know, shows him what for will say. Yes, go <laughs> on. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, you know, it's just, it's all pretty stupid because also you know when you're outside too people walking by are not wearing masks uh you know the people eating aren't wearing masks i'm like okay cool yep. and, you, and then you they're gotta like get that thing you gotta get the dad thing where they're like you have the mask that you designed on your own that like levers itself open so you can right. fucking shove ravioli in there exactly uh, i would also like to point out that al fresco is not even how you would refer to dining outdoors in italian so it's I'm very annoying. To cultural me. appropriation. <laughs> yeah, I exactly. I wonder if it's a humidity thing, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're in sunny Southern California, and we have you know gross East Coast humidity air, um, oh, which is you know just suffocating constantly. Yeah, except I, you know, it's been 90 <laughs> degrees uh, for the past like couple. We've been in a heat wave for the past couple weeks, and it's been like truly one of the worst. The experiences I've had with heat waves well, in LA, I, I, even when I, I was like I, I, in college and there was no, like, I don't have air conditioning now, but at least I live on the first floor when I was in college and I didn't have air conditioning and was like on like the fifth floor of a building with like the sun in my goddamn eyeballs all the time. I was like, ah, yes, I'm yeah, cooking right. like a grill. Um, wow. An air fryer. <laughs> I, I love to I love to like live on the top of this mesa of graph that we've constructed here and just kind of wait for it to go down. Yeah, it's it's fine. fine. It's also it's the numbers are going to go down because now all the hospitals have to report all of their data to a random LLC that is deeply associated with the Trump campaign instead of the CDC. So I'm sure it's fine and we won't have any problems. Wait, they got to report to like Boya? <laughs> listen, listen as a puerto rican as, as a puerto rican i nothing has upset me more than like having to deal with uh conservatives suddenly being like i'm buying goya products because i'm like what the fuck are you gonna do with Eating so beans for the first time in my life <laughs> it's like, it's like they keep buying adobo which by the way is an amazing seasoning and i'm upset that i can't buy it now and i just have to make my own but it's like i keep buying adobo and i'm like what are you gonna do put one grain of it on chicken and be like that's <laughs> spicy <laughs> Yeah, you know, you, you, you put you put it into a <laughs> big bowl of water <laughs> to dilute it, right? Whereas, yeah. well, listen, yes. not to not to not to you know be too uh, you know spicy on Maine, but like, where is Lolita Lebron when you need her? You know, <laughs> that's obscure <laughs> enough that I don't have to beep it. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, in, in other Praxis news, uh, the USS the USS Bonhomme Richard, um, which is like. Named for James, for like named for John Paul Jones. I think they said James Earl Jones. Named for John Paul Jones's <laughs> flagship. <laughs> Na yeah, named, named for James for Earl Jones' flagship in the hunt for Red October. No, named for um, Jim Jones. <laughs> <the people. laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, the, the, the USS Fancy Lad, right, the fucking, the, they actually nicknamed it the Bonnie Dick at one point, which, <laughs> come on. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, like, I, the, the, USS, oh, the USS Fancy Lad, d- who desires a treat, uh, fucking extremely <laughs> caught fire in San Diego. Um, they, they had it in for routine maintenance, and as part of the routine maintenance, the first thing they did, switch off all of the firefighting equipment, and Great then idea. it catches fire. Yeah, no, not, not seems like a bad not good, time. Not terrible. Turn not off good, the fire the, fighting equipment. It's not, it's not the order I would do it in. Well, it reminds it reminds me so very strongly of um, the the thing that the Glasgow School of Art did after it burned down, which was uh, burned down again the day before they installed the <laughs> firefighting equipment. Or Notre Dame. Yes. You know? Yeah. 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 The, the time when it's most likely for a building, or in this case, a boat, which is like a building, but it floats, um, <laughs> to catch fire is when it's undergoing maintenance, because people are using, like, grinders and shit, you know? Smoking like, cigarettes. I figure, uh, I figure when you're working on a fire suppression system, that should be the only time the fire suppression system is turned off. <laughs> No, but just, like, just leave it on. Just leave it on. Just open, a, uh, like, a valve and just get fucking drenched with firefighting foam. Ah, oh shit. my god! Hate when I go down to San Diego and my Bonnie Dick catches fire. You know? <laughs> yeah, you got to stop meeting Marines on Tinder, is what? Yeah. Uh, I don't right. intentionally meet that Marines on Tinder. They just don't know me. Nice. Speaking of buildings in the water, what about buildings in the sky? Oh, that was a beautiful oh, yeah. segue. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, Perfect. what you're looking at here is an airplane. It is a specific kind of airplane. This is a DC McDonnell Douglas DC-9. You can tell because it says DC-9 on the side, right? It's helpfully mm-hmm. labeled. All right, so this was uh, you know, a commercial jet. It's single aisle. You know, you got like, I think, two seats on each side of the aisle. It's a narrow body. You know, it's meant for shorter flights. Uh, predecessor to the Boeing 717. That was after they merged. Oh yeah, um, I forgot form. McDonnell Douglas ate Boeing and made it bad. Oh yeah, yeah essentially. Yeah. They made it seem like it was the it. other way around, but it it's really like, wasn't. Parasitized hmm. it like a cordyceps fungus, you know? Hmm. <laughs> Just like, getting all the aircraft yeah. executives to go stand <laughs> on top of roofs. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this was, uh, this plane was good for, you know, shorter, medium-range flights. Uh, you know, especially back when most air travel was on shorter routes, right? We, that one-to-one replacement for a propeller plane, really. Hmm. Um, they also sold it in Europe, uh, also for shorter routes, um, you know, and that, that was especially prior to, like, when we had high-speed rail, uh, when shorter routes were taken over by trains that ran fast enough they could compete with planes. Um, it, of course, has this wonderful thing called a T-tail, uh, which means it's really easy to stall. It <laughs> has built-in air stairs. Well, so it looks can, magnificent. Yeah, you can oh, yeah. you can be Cooper out of there real easy. <laughs> um, that, that is something that I look for in a flight: is yeah, whether or like, not I can take a shit ton jazz, of the FBI's money. Yeah, yeah and just right. like leap out over a state park in Washington and fucking die. This is all like Italian maybe, TV Cooper, like Daniele oh, no. Bernoulli Cooper, you know? <laughs> <laughs> 100% DB Cooper died on impact, but like, let's not get into that. At a range of 1,278 nautical miles, uh, had a cruising speed of 484 knots. Uh, and fuck off with kilometers. I'm not, I'm not giving that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just uh, no no metric system podcast. I keep having Absolutely this conversation not. about how how the the imperial system is just so much easier to use from like a personal scale of reference. Where like you know I, a foot is a foot, and I can put my foot hmm. next to something and be like, yeah, that's a foot. You know, yeah, four nice. hundred and eighty four knots is is very intuitive. It's, I mean, it's I- how many. <laughs> fucking knots of rope I would let out of the back of a boat if it was going at 484 knots. We need to be using red keen on temperature, and we need to be bringing back the cubit, okay? <laughs> <laughs> How many cubits per hour is this plane going? <laughs> <laughs> but like, also, one thing I do notice about this is that this is an Italian plane, and you can tell because of the Italia on it. Yes, um, that's exactly the right intonation. 
into uh, interesting yeah. history behind this particular one because it's originally sold to Hawaiian Airlines. <laughs> now, here's a question. You have a range on this plane of 1,278 nautical miles. Uh, if a train leaving <laughs> Chattanooga at 3 p.m. Yeah. How, do you, how do you get it from Hawaii to Italy? You simply uh, bring it on a boat. Yeah, no. probably. Oh, yeah. No, you don't. <laughs> you do a what bunch of like stop short hops in like airfields and like fucking Tinian uh, and Guam. No, you don't do you. that either. The oh, way no. they transport these tiny planes out to Hawaii in the middle of nowhere is they take out all the seats and they put in fuel tanks inside the fuselage to extend the range. Mm. Holy that shit! That rules. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a KC nine. <laughs> but for itself, <laughs> yes. Incredible. Wow. I love that for it. You know, they they yeah. don't talk about this in the movie Cars, but you know, this is the, that's the plane you would least want to have a plane crash. Is the one that's just filled with just bladders full with of fuel. Afghans. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean it's okay because as long as the building is steel framed, it won't do anything. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah. Future right. future episode there. <laughs> All right. Oh boy. Uh, I, I guess I got to hand it off here to Alice and Noah to talk about. Italian politics. Uh, grazie. Oh, I am, Lisa, I am so happy. Uh, so here you're going to see a map <laughs> of the, the 1948 Italian election results. Don't want to touch my spaghetti! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, the famous slogan of Democrazia Cristiana at the time. Um, but here you'll see a map of uh, the Italian uh, election results. Um, so in order to talk about like, the Ustica thing, I think we need to talk about Italian politics, specifically because... Uh, Italy is, um, how do I put this? Just the CIA hammering a big sign into the ground <laughs> that says, no communism allowed. Yeah, and the Soviet Union just kind of like airdropping money to a bunch of like starving Italian communists who are just like, yeah. I, I would like to have the union, please. <laughs> so the, the, thing, the factory the owners thing. in Milan are the worst, <laughs> and they make me eat the stupid Milanese food. Okay, please. <laughs> so you, you may recall that, that Italy was fascist in World War II, and you may what? also recall that, uh, that, that some Italians did not like this very much, and like Mussolini got involved in, with some Antifa, uh, who like <laughs> compromised him to a permanent end, along with a bunch of other like various anti-fascist careers? Allegedly, <laughs> yeah. allegedly compromised him to a permanent end. Any we'll photos about. of partisans killing Mussolini that have identifiable faces? Allegedly, um, Mussolini. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> but like, my, the the point of me talking about this is that a lot of those guys were communist. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're operating, if you are Alan Dulles, right, you're operating on this kind of domino theory that communism is like this social contagion. You can't fucking let Italy just be the westernmost bit of the Soviet Union, right? Their and pasta so, is already bread. What if the rest of them become that? You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you have this like, uh, you have a communist party in Italy, the PCI, um, which is. Yeah, as as you say, no, it gets it gets some money from Papa Stalin, right? Yeah. And then on on the other hand of this, you have the CIA just throwing money and arms and everything at anyone who says, "Yeah, no, fuck mm -hmm. those guys." Yeah, and I think it's also it's important to talk about uh, the the whole like Italy does this thing where in every single war they just switch to whatever the winning side is halfway through. Which is a strategy yeah, it's that being has, cool, right? Which is a strategy yeah, yeah, that has worked out really well, actually, for them. Gotta hedge them bets, baby. Yeah, because like <laughs> I, you know, very few, very few Italian fascists uh, actually like suffered consequences as a result of the of the war. But uh, I mean, yeah. very few fucking German fascists suffered any consequences. Yeah, but, but some of them yeah. were executed. Let's talk about Operation Paperclip and <laughs> yeah. uh, how we beat the Soviets to the moon. Goddamn. Yeah. Well, yeah, also I was about like to say our Germans were better than their Germans. Right, but also like you know the Soviets <laughs> did execute a bunch of did execute a bunch of Nazis. Whereas like yeah. nothing similar. I mean, yes, partisans went around like rounding up and killing. Uh, you know the Fa. Uh, the Antifa super soldiers did that, but you know it's it, that's fine, and I'm not going to lose sleep over the, it. Im, the important guys got away even more scot free than in Germany. Yeah, is what exactly. you're saying. The, uh, the Americans did some war crimes, but like the big one is like a massacre at a concentration camp of a bunch of SS dudes, 
And I got to tell you, I don't care all that well, they much. Also, yeah. I would also like <laughs> yeah, to point out, yeah. uh, so already during World War II, what happens is essentially the king is like, yeah, I'm not so down with Mussolini anymore. And it's like, what if I... Uh, what if I, um, you know, throw in my giant elaborate hat in with the winning side? Huh? So uh, he did. And so the Italian forces essentially joined up with the Allies, and then we reconquered Italy. In the process, uh, we bombed a, like, a bunch of communist neighborhoods all over Italy to prevent communism, uh, including mm. in Rome. Uh, and uh, the only part of Rome that was bombed. Uh, and so what happens is at the end of the war, there's this referendum that abolishes the monarchy because people are like, how could the, how could the king lead us into this? And then there's this battle over what Italy is going to be going forward. So the first big election that happens after that is the 1948 election, which, again, you're seeing the results right here. Parallelia uh, Cingale was very popular in the Tuscany region. Uh, and, uh, you know, the incumbent... Oh, Fettuccine Alfredo just got booted off the Because island. Fettuccine yeah, Alfredo reason. was born in fashion. Um, <laughs> but uh, we all know this. But so basically both sides are pouring a ton of money into this. And uh, you have two basic coalitions. You have the same coalition that I think, Alice, you've talked about in other instances of this podcast, um, the, the Christian Democrats. Uh, it was actually, it's, I keep mm. forgetting, it's on the Austrian wine team's tainting scandal episode with yeah, Riley. You, you, uh, you have this like centrist party that doesn't really stand for anything other than just being in power mm -hmm. everywhere and all of your uncles in it. Like a competent version of the Democrats. There's yes, the, yes, kind of. There's the tweet that's like, it, it, <laughs> Italy is the the ideal, ver like the the it, 70s Italy is the sort of apex of uh, multi party democracy because like you know there are like 300 different parties and you're constantly getting blown up in your attempt to vote for any one of them. But um, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, so yeah, as you mentioned in the episode with uh, with Riley, long time listener, first time caller. Um, the uh, there's this Christian Democrat series of parties that spring up that are essentially like fronts for the U.S. government to tamp down communism. And on the yeah. other side, you have Antifa super soldier Palmiro Togliatti and his uh, Partito Comunista Italiana, which does is part of the common turn and takes orders from Moscow. They're in coalition hmm. with. We, get, we have some pictures here, don't we? On we the next do slide. In, the, in the next slide, um, <laughs> and we have the, uh, the. If we want to go ahead and cut to that next slide, uh, thank you, Justin. Um, yeah, so on we the left, Michael Caine. <laughs> on the left, we have Michael Caine, um, <laughs> who is Palmiro Togliatti. In the middle, we have, uh, you know, um, we have uh, Pietro Nenni as uh, as uh, Danny DeVito playing the penguin, which I think is also <laughs> there might be a thing that comes in on that. Um, if you hit the next I don't button, think there is. Sure. Oh, okay, maybe yeah. I deleted it. Anyway, and then on the right, you have like. Uh, Jeff Goldblum crossed the flaw, uh, frog, who is Alcide de Gasperi, who is the head of the Christian Ge Democrats at the time. Mm. And, so, uh, so from left to right, then, both literally and uh, politically, we have like the guy who could have been the chairman of the People's Republic. Yeah. Uh, this kind of like squishy socialist. Um, and then, what if we just did continuity fascism? And then also, like you have a spoiler party, uh, sort of the uh, Social Democratic Socialist Unity Party, which is very ironic, uh, led by Giuseppe Saragat, who is a fine, I guess, but you know, uh, combined, <laughs> combined, the uh, you know the uh, the Democrazia Cristiana gets uh, forty eight percent of the vote, or something like that. But um, the all of the left wing parties get about thirty, or sorry, forty five percent of the vote, and all the left wing parties get about like thirty eight percent of the vote. So this is Italy is one of the battleground states in Europe against communism. Um, hmm. So that's like it, uncomfortably close, right? And 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 in yeah. order to combat this, the U.S. government puts a lot of money into an initiative developed by the originally the British. So here's where I get to. Once again, blame the British for everything that's yeah, wrong with it's, uh, it's the state of the world. Fault. Yeah. yeah. Um, so basically, uh, you know, you have a situation where the uh, Alice. Do you want to talk about the SOE? Oh yeah. Next yeah. next slide, please. So yeah. Yeah. The side. Well, basically, <laughs> yeah. The three, what's this? I'm seeing here. Three gladios. Yeah. So uh, the short the short version of this is that Winston Churchill is a dipshit, right? Um, 
He yes. doesn't he doesn't know how to fight wars. He keeps like being like, well, what if we invade the soft underbelly of Turkey in the First World War? <laughs> Italy in the Second World War, it goes yes. horribly. But the global campaign was well known for working good. Oh, yeah. But famously uh, also the United States mutilated a bunch of Japanese war dead of World War II. Oh yeah. That's another war Not good. we did, but yeah. 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 And also yeah, Unit seven thirty one, so you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, anyway, well, let's not get sidetracked. Yeah, let's here. not talk about my grandfather. Anyway, <laughs> how dare <laughs> you? So, so the thing is, right? Part of Churchill's uh, like military stupidity is that he constantly wants aggression, aggression, aggression. This is does not make him very popular with spies. England has quite good spies at times. Um, but they're all sort of these like aristocratic fops who are like, hmm, I don't think I don't like this idea of killing people very much. And so they let Churchill form this his own little private secret service called the Special Operations Executive, um, whose sole goal is to recruit these incredibly dangerous and incredibly brave dudes from occupied countries and and ladies, I should say, uh, parachute them in to build resistance networks so they can spend six months blowing up like a power substation that gets repaired in a week and then all get tortured and executed by yeah, the Gestapo. Yeah, Alice, Alice, mm. Alice, on the other hand, these days you can be arrested and thrown in jail simply for, putting, for blowing up a power station or a bridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the, like, Apologies <laughs> to my love. There's, there's all the fun guys. Yeah, that's <laughs> so we get to do the, like, the fun stuff, and you get a lot of like action movies out of it after the war, but they're disbanded very quickly after the war because nobody wants that like that skill set of blowing up power stations yeah. anymore, and it wasn't that Some useful in the first place. Skill set, and those yeah. people hey, were you wanna, you wanna you wanna join the SOE and go behind the enemy lines and do some petty vandalism, and then get tortured to death? <laughs> Hell yeah! You wanna you wanna <laughs> join? You, you wanna join the SOE and draw like a mural of like Hitler making out with Stalin on the side of a bridge <laughs> in Berlin? Oh my god! <laughs> Also, they had a they had a they had a nasty habit of getting killed by the Soviets, mm. which is actually my favorite. Well, yeah. fair play. So, <laughs> you know, fair play. <laughs> okay, but like th this idea, this idea of SOE, it doesn't quite die though, because there's always going to be someone as dumb as Winston Churchill, and in this case, so this the someone that dumb is probably Alan Dulles. Um, <laughs> yeah, Alan Dulles, head of the CIA at this time. Um, but like one of the few like brother double acts in politics. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. No, he he just decides. Huh. What if we just kind of keep doing this and we have this like stay behind thing? Because we know that like if the Soviets invade Western Europe, we're never going to be able to hold Europe itself. Maybe Britain. Maybe. Um, but like, assuming things don't go nuclear, all of these countries like France and Germany are going to get completely overrun. Good. So what if? What if we have the SOE guys just like just like living living quietly, chilling, and then when the Soviets overrun them, they uh, go like they go sicko mode and they go blow up Soviet stuff and shoot Soviet officers and things of that nature. And to quote um, the television series Archer, uh, it turned into a crypto fascist shit show starring Alan Dulles and a bunch of former Nazis. Yes, so. because all all of the like. You know, all of the people you can recruit for this stuff are former like Waffen SS guys, Ooh, and so that's what thanks. they do. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry, I think you just have ten people go stand in the fold again, <laughs> and I don't know, <laughs> throw one hedgehog tank trap down and kind of hope for the best. Uh, I mean, I just I, I, yeah. I would also like to point out, I mean, you know, the um, you know, the what you're you're maligning these people as Nazis, but really they're just free speech warriors. Acting out against the Antifa threat, you know. Yeah, you, you hear yeah. about this shit, and you realize, well, like, so maybe so Stalin's yeah. paranoia was not that unjustified. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> so, the Jews certainly so, should not have killed the Jews. Yeah, so no, I mean, no. we're just here, baby. Stalin, so this, this, we're not here so, to defend Stalin. <laughs> Much <laughs> yes. So, so this, much. this initiative, this initiative is codenamed Gladio, right? It means sword. You can see it on the thing, uh, and there's one of these in pretty much every country. And as you say, that it, looks like the dick and balls. Yeah, it <laughs> looks like a dick and balls, and immediately these turn fascist. Um, it's it's very difficult to ascertain exactly how much th their actions are like controlled by anyone. The ones in Belgium just fucking turn into like natural born killers, guys, because they realize, oh hey, we have all of these like American submachine guns and explosives. We can go just rob bank vans and kill people for fun. And like Baxters. the one in mm, the, the one <laughs> in Turkey just turns into what becomes the original deep state there. So like it 
it, it gets weird very quickly. But this is Italy is the big like showpiece gladio thing, especially it's because one, like mm. Italian fascism was already really weird because like you get people like uh Ju- like the, it's underpinned by people like Julius Evola who is like just like a a fascist wizard. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, literally, he's just fascist Gandalf um, or or like J.K. Rowling. You know, that's just who he is as a person. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it gets very weird very quickly. Um, and one of the ways in which it gets weird is on the next slide. Um, Alice, can we get the drop for this? <laughs> <laughs> which which dropped? Oh yeah, fuck. Yeah. You wanted to? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it's Berlusconi's horrifying election song. Uh, this song, I keep making jokes about how this is just Italian Pete Buttigieg because, like, every line in this song is like, we have hopes and dreams. We're going to make those dreams reality. And the president is going to help you do that. But it never spells out exactly what the hell they are, <laughs> um, which is cool. <laughs> Super, I don't know, just... Yeah, exactly. Copyright strike. Oh, God. Oh, it's me, cheering for Juventus, doing, doing fascist stuff. I don't care about Cristiano. I'm so tired of hearing about Ronaldo. <laughs> so, so, so this, is, this is Silvio yes. Berlusconi, right? Who is, the older uh, Cristiano so Ronaldo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, look at that face. Uh, so Got a face like the Joker. The reason Silvio Berlusconi is on here is because one of the various appendages of Operation Gladio is this uh, this Masonic Lodge. And if you could go to the next thing in this slide, um, uh, Justin, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> there's a third evolution of this slide that we'll get to. But um, so the thing is, uh, there is a literal Masonic Lodge pulling the strings of Italian politics for a long, long time. And it's led by this dude named Licio Gelli, who is just an unapologetic fascist um, from the time of like Mussolini. And hmm. they actually get decommissioned in uh, this like 70, like 68 or 70 because they're too political. Um, and they, you know, what they're doing is they're getting money from the Vatican. Uh, next thing on the slide, please. They're getting money from the Vatican. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> there we go. I mean, the, the, the point, like, the, all of this sounds nice. deeply insane, but like, the thing to learn here is that, like, in seventies Italy, every conspiracy theory is true at once, but only in Italy. So, like, the thing about the thing about propaganda due is propaganda due is a a conduit for a number of things. And the, I don't think I've explained the reason Silvio Berlusconi is on the slide is because he was a member of this lodge and continued to be in Italian politics after that was discovered and also owns all the media in Italy now, which is fine and cool. Um, hmm. But it, again, to be clear, the lodge was called Propaganda Due. Yeah, right? it's like straight up called Propaganda yes. Due. It's not like a nickname. And there was, there was no Propaganda Uno. Uh, there was, it was because it was, uh, they switched to numbering the Masonic lodges. Um, and oh, so like, it's like local oh. propaganda. Right. Number four. <laughs> it's your local, your, your local Freemason <laughs> union. You unionize the Masonic yeah. conspiracy. International yes. Brotherhood of Gladio operatives. Uh, it's it's the tress. It's the tress from the um, from the novel uh, Foucault's Pendulum. But they're a union now, and it's good. So we have to yeah. support. Listen, I represent conspiracy theory <laughs> instigators union local one hundred and three. I do UFOs. I do mole people. Uh, we, we represent big Mike, big Mike down there. Does weather control? What do you need? What do you need? Hey, listen, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Mike rolling in forty five minutes late with like a half eaten Italian sub. He totally fucking forgot to turn on the weather machine today. Just got like it's a just truck, a truck bed <laughs> full of weather machine parts, just <laughs> rattling around loose. <laughs> Right, it's fine, it's fine. I'm from the what does it matter? Market. We set the tornado the right place. What does it matter? It's 45 minutes late. You talk to the rep. <laughs> I cannot walk under these conditions. I, I'm from the local 9 11 conspiracists union, and I want to say that you're treading on our territory a little bit with this new shit, okay? <laughs> so so oh, propaganda. City. So oh, propaganda okay. doing is like this is why the uh, union, the uh, conspiracist union, should be under IWW. <laughs> wouldn't have this turf war. You just take your, <laughs> you take your red card from like, in, uh, like <laughs> stage shooting to stage shooting. Listen, my father, my father organized the JFK assassination. 
I organized the pl- the shoe bombing on the plane. You know, my this is a union <laughs> family. <laughs> <laughs> so so that, that is what so, propaganda do it is is right. like the so conspiracy the about, theorists union and the thing about this is that they they act primarily as well first of all to direct operations of gladio allegedly to direct operations of gladio and there's like enough stuff going on with that that it becomes pretty clear that like some there's definitely connections between the two but also there is this thing with a bank that is managed by a member of propaganda do it uh, called Roberto Calvi, whom Alice will talk about in a second, but uh, they mm. take money from the CIA and uh, route it through the Vatican Bank and then send it out all over the world to causes that the U.S. government is trying to support. So, for example, they sold, they sent money to the Contras, they sent money to Solidarność in Poland, and uh, when that became a whole thing, uh, and generally support, uh, you know, the anti-Antifa movements across the world, which you can just call FOP. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Roberto Calvi, uh, Alice, if you want to do the, the Calvi thing. Oh, uh, Roberto Calvi is, like, he. Th- this guy, he was called God's Banker because he moved so much money through the Vatican Bank. Um, but like, eventually he gets a little bit too too nervous about this, and uh, there, there is perhaps some suspicion that he moved some money to some places that he shouldn't have in order to enrich himself, and so, he disappears completely, which is a normal thing to do, right? Um, he, he goes to London, where he takes a walk to the underside of Blackfriars Bridge, a thing you can only reach by boat, um, fills his pockets full of rocks and ties his neck to the bridge and uh, strangles himself. Just yeah, like normal, a perfectly normal suicide. No need to investigate further. It absolutely, perfectly. No, nothing is weird about this. I would also like to point out as we continue into the next section um, and the discussion of this. Uh, a, I was googling a bunch of farms in the Falkland Islands. Uh, because of a New York a New Yorker article, so if I disappear and have said that I've gone to the Falkland Islands, that's not where I went. Um, you know, uh, my hyoid bone is like pretty weak, uh, and you know, I am constantly having dark thoughts. So keep all this in mind. Yeah, I mean, this is this is the thing. Like you, uh, no, you referenced uh, an Umberto Eco novel called Foucault's Pendulum*, the premise of which is not to spoil too much that every conspiracy theory is true and happening simultaneously. And one That's day I will the get vine. the film rights to it. One day. Yeah, it's um, right. So It's also a prison. Yeah, it is. It is a prison. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm glad that we're talking about how much of a prison this all is. Okay, so the next slide <laughs> has, uh, I think, the the context for Usika, because we are getting back to the plane. But um, mm-hmm. uh, clockwise from left, that's the kidnapping of Aldo Moro, the Piazza Fontana bombing in Milan, and the Bologna train station bombing, about which we will hear more later. But uh, essentially, the deal is that during the 70s, there are a series of incidents that take place that are uh, terrorist attacks from both the far right and the far left. Later, it is discovered that Gladio has some involvement in supporting and making these happen as part of what's called the strategy of tension. Literal false flag attacks. Once right. again, 70s Italy, the only place where mm-hmm. Alex Jones could have been right. And, and you know, it's, it's very... Operation Northwoods was a thing, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. true. I mean, also, like, you know, it's, 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 you say that, but also, you know, COINTELPRO existed, uh, you know, the US government regularly, like, just straight up lies to us about things, not to get Alex Jonesy on here, but like, the, the CIA carries these tactics with, with them both home and abroad. But essentially, the strategy of tension is intended to create a stable, like, crypto fascist government to maintain capitalist power within a country and it does which this which is such a like like bombing the village in order to save it ass <laughs> thing right. of, very normal like, very yeah. normal world um stability is when you blow up enough train stations <laughs> that people do not vote communist right and the more train stations you've blown up the more stable the country is as we all know that's true um, true but uh, also, by the way, uh, interesting thing to talk about, like all of these uh, suspiciously timed, quote unquote, Islamic terror attacks in uh, in England hmm. that are part of the same. So the way that the strategy of tension works is essentially that you allow slash fund fascist terrorist attacks against not the state, but against the people. So that's why you only attack civilian targets at that. So Piazza Fontana was at a bank. 
uh, the uh, the uh, Bologna train station bombing thing was as a train station. Uh, various other attacks were carried on on the civilian population, and the idea is. You then make the civilian population turn towards the government to protect them against the fascists. But then you also allow left-wing terror attacks slash fund slash make up left-wing terror attacks against the state so that the people who are now aligned with the state in terms of protecting themselves uh, are seeing the communists as the real threat and the real enemy. And that's why if you look at the Piazza Fontana bombing, like the, they immediately arrested this random anarchist for it. And then he suspiciously just happened to fall out of a fourth floor window, which is normal. Classic anarchist text. Crazy how that happens. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's yeah. so weird how anarchists keep getting arrested for things they just do spontaneously and then just <laughs> dying while trying to escape. All anarchists well, yeah, know it's... is be bisexual, hand out water, <laughs> pull out a fourth floor window, and lie. Yeah. <laughs> they, they don't believe in um, in the state mandated. Uh, Safety features that prevent you from falling out windows. You see, <laughs> yeah, no guards, no stairs. masters, oh, no oh, stairs. Oh, 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 no stairs, not, not, not PPE. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is a bunch of look, Ayn state. Ayn. A state is a state. That's fair. That's fair. This is a bunch of Ayn Rand inspired terrorists, just like not complying with OSHA regulations. <laughs> <laughs> and like the thing is, the thing is that like they were. The thing is that like Gladio is kind of involved for cer to like some extent or another in pretty much all of these, right? Because right. they have this like secret network of people who are trained to use explosives and stuff, and they have like just regular like big old caches of explosives just all over. Over Italy, one of them's in a graveyard in Verona, which is incredibly like fucking and movie it contains, shit. They all contain, as we'll talk about later, pla like plastic explosives, high grade rifles. Uh, so they don't contain any uh, any SA80s, and that's important. But um, the mm. so <laughs> the, no, it's, uh, you, you open one of these, mm. and it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, I have I have I have I have uh, you know compiled references so I can tie this into previous episodes, just like the writer that I am. But um, the so the thing is, uh, the the one on the left is probably one that we should just very quickly go over to talk about the guy that's in charge of Italy when all this happens, who centers very, like, very closely in this upcoming plane disaster. Uh, the guy on the left is uh, all around like just nice dude Aldo Moro, who was the head of Democrazia Cristiana. He was the prime minister uh, in the in the seventies, uh, in a portion of the seventies, until he was. His bodyguards were shot dead, and he was kidnapped out of the blue uh, by the Red Brigades. And please note that I'm making a really big, like, air quote <laughs> motion while I say yeah. it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that thing, that classic thing that communist terrorists are able to do. Kill a bunch of uh, bodyguards, kidnap a prime minister, and then evade detection for months. Sometimes just by minutes, like the cops would be going to like raid an apartment. Huh, the coffee's still warm, but everyone's left. Almost like they oh, were warm. Everyone's gone. Oh, Weird. I wonder what could have happened here. Yeah, also. <laughs> Certainly we, the police, have nothing to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I would like to I would like to say that like the machines that they were communicating on were previously owned by the Italian government, like in that within that year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so the Red Brigades kidnapped Aldo Moro, and this guy called Francesco Cosiga, who we will talk about, forms essentially three emergency committees that grant himself a wide variety of powers. One of the <clears> two of them are public, and one of them is secret, and contains a bunch of doctors who are like, "What's going on with Aldo Moro?" Because he seems to be chilling, like Jay chilling. Um, and uh, the um, the thing that happens there is that all of the minutes of that committee are leaked. So that it makes it look like he's got Stockholm syndrome, and there's no way to get him back. And eventually, someone within the Red Brigades, uh, Francesco Cosiga, refuses to negotiate with terrorists, and someone within the Red Brigades pulls the trigger and kills Aldo Moro because. And here's the most the motive. F's in the chat. F's in the chat for a you know a nice boy because the 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 motive is that Aldo Moro had a plan to essentially invite the left into government. And take the de the Democracia Cristiana out of coalition with the right wing party. <laughs> that kind of shit is bad for your health. That's like when a when an African leader starts using the words land reform. Or like That's when, really when a Bolivian hmm. uh, president is like, I don't want to give this lithium to Elon Musk. It's like whoops. Yeah. Really <laughs> hazardous activity. <laughs> 
And I'm sure that election is going to go fine and we won't hear any problems with that. And the left will very peacefully and democratically regain its spot. Hmm. Um, so naturally. So, right, exactly. So, um, so this would have given the left in Italy, like actual power in terms of, uh, things that it like to pass, for example, welfare and union shit and all that. And nope, can't, we have have that. That. can't have that. No. And, it's very widely suspected among Italians and in Italy that this was a front operation of Gladio, especially because Propaganda Due met literally hours after Aldo Moro was kidnapped. And Licio Gelli says, okay, well, the hard part is done. So, but <laughs> Jesus Christ, what could he be barely to? even hiding it. Yeah. <laughs> what could he okay, be referring so- to? Well, where, where you're leading us to is this guy, Cosiga, yeah. who is like mysteriously, who is investigating, uh, who's like leading the government through its its troubled time in the midst of this hostage crisis. Right. He and he's becomes. On the... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, he becomes uh, prime minister, right? Yes, he becomes prime minister at the time that the Ustica thing is happening. So if we could go to the next slide, uh, we'll see him with one of history's greatest monsters. Headed to a pizza. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the thing is that the thing is that Francesco Cosiga um, was is like from a bourgeois family who are radically anti-communist. He made his bones in politics by putting down the Bologna student rebellion, by infiltrating them, uh, directing them to do violence, and then arresting them and their professors and putting them in jail. Um, no parallels. Right. These days, you can be arrested and thrown in jail simply for being a student activist. Um, but anyway, <laughs> I love that joke. Uh, anyway, so uh, he is elected prime minister in uh, after this, uh, you know, this uh, kidnapping uh, in seventy nine to eighty. And the thing about Democrazia Cristiana is they have like ten very boring politicians who are just sort of shunted upwards up the ladder between prime minister and president, etc. Um, so like he's yeah, J- uh, Jack Johnson and John Jackson exactly uh, like trading places yes. to be prime minister of Italy, and the the John Jackson in the situation is uh, Francesco Cosiga, and the Jack Johnson is this guy um, is this guy whose name I am some uh, Giulio Andreotti, uh, who is like basically the same dude but less fun and cool. And Cosiga is prime minister during this whole thing. We'll talk a little bit more about his prime ministership, but he resigns a few months after Bologna. And after like a bunch of evidence about Operation Gladio is revealed, in like the list of uh, members of Propaganda Due and the extent of that conspiracy, etc., which is very suspicious, then he becomes president in the nineties. Uh, but he starts getting very depressed and sarcastic uh, after this big <laughs> <Imagine> fight. <that. laughs> this big fight that he has with Giulio Andreotti, uh, where Andreotti spills the beans on Gladio and is like, "Yeah, we did this. Cosiga was involved, and I was involved, and it's all fine now. You know, it, it's over. Everything's fine. Everything's fine." Yeah. So, <laughs> he, so the thing is, Sorry about that, uh, you know, and and then the communists tried to impeach him, but he, you know, he got really mad, and he basically um, he was called Il Matacone, uh, so like the pickaxe wielder. Um, because he just like said whatever the fuck was on his mind, including that like, for example, Palestinians did uh, the the uh, the the, the Bologna, Bologna train, train station, station yeah, bombing. Yeah, yeah. Um, just and, absolute bullshit. But like, he's a he quiet, did, part loud guy, right? Yeah, and he did actually struggle with bipolar disorder and depression a lot in his later years. So it's well, a, he's a, he's a small bean. He's he's just a small bean. Mm-hmm. Hoops is doing fascist coups. So, okay, now that the plan. Yeah. Um, so that's the background that you need to understand what exactly is going on. Yeah. With the thank you thank you yeah. for attending Noah and Alice's Italian Politics University about like, how everything bad is the CIA. Right, but listen, uh, yeah. the CIA uh, loves to make the pizza and loves to make the pasta. You know? uh, so speaking of pizza and pasta... Don't want to touch my spaghetti! <laughs> so uh, up here is Bologna, right? Up here, right? Hmm. That's Bologna. And, and, uh, that's it. At Bologna, yes. Down here is Palermo, right? Right. People like to go there for vacations to southern Italy from northern Italy, right? Mm-hmm. It's going from Germany right. to Spain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it, it, yeah, because uh, over like here, this is basically Germany. Or it's also kind of like Ohio. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to again just say that I'm here to defend Italians unironically and say that Northern Italy is very beautiful and that particular region is very communist. So, you know. Yeah, but, but you don't like the pasta. Kind of like Ohio. Yeah. I, I do actually like Northern <laughs> Italian pasta. I like all Italian pastas. They all rule. Anyway, I love Italy. 
best country in the world. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, okay. Now, one of the things is back in uh, late 70s, early 80s, the way you get anywhere from anywhere else in Italy is you, you got to basically fly there, right? Unless you want to take a long, slow train, get on a ferry, cross the strait, get to Palermo. Mm. I absolutely uh, want to do that, but I'm yeah. fucking weird. So the ferry is a row row ferry, yeah. so you don't really want to do that. Oh, exactly. no, 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 belay that. Oh, Never mind. Yep. No. At this point, there was one high speed line. It went from Florence to Rome. It was called the Directissima, right? Mm. And that that opened in 1977. The very around direct. the same time. <laughs> yes. I think around the same time the French had the TGV, but we never hear about the Italians pioneering high speed rail for some reason. Um, the left hates oh, Italians okay. and erases their contribution. <laughs> well, it's just worse PR. I mean, that's that's literally. I'm just here to defend Italians. That's that's why I'm here. Okay, they rule, and I love Italy. Please let me back in. <laughs> yeah. So, on the 27th of June, 1980, Itavia Flight 870 which was a McDonnell Douglas DC-9 Series 15 that we saw in an earlier slide, takes off from Bologna en route to Palermo, right? Two hours delayed on the tarmac. Ugh. Um, now, Imagine being in that plane being like, uh, can this get any worse? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? All right, Chandler so, from Friends. <laughs> hey, Shut hey, the fuck, fuck up. up. <laughs> they just left <laughs> out the phalange before they took off. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they took off in heavy weather, um, but the uh, weather clears after they get into the Tyrrhenian Sea. And that's this area here, right? So around 8.37 p.m., uh, they just lose radio contact with the plane, right? Oh, good. There's, uh, no, no one knows what happened, right? There's no indication of distress, nothing. Is that good? They yeah, the vacation, man. Don't worry about it. <laughs> people living their lives not a cell phone in sight <laughs> yeah. Just fine. they 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 scramble the air force to look for the flight right now it was it was very clear right but they still had poor visibility hmm. because it was night mm, uh, that's that, not so good yeah. yeah that's a twist <laughs> there was a gremlin on the plane wing and you know nobody was <laughs> yeah. paying attention <laughs> They didn't believe so, me. Yeah. Now, again, the weather was good. They gave no distress signal. The next day, they found wreckage floating on the surface and a bunch of bodies also floating on the ocean. So they, they found out the plane wrecked pretty quickly. It's not like MH370, where it's like, I don't know, it flew into a time warp or some bullshit. Yeah, you, right? you gotta like crash but, it into a bigger ocean if you want the time warp effect. It's the worst right. vacation ever. <laughs> 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 So, but then the question the question became: All right, how did this plane wreck? Hmm. It was a mysterious act of God's love, and I don't think that we can question <laughs> yes. that. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Well, the investigation was sandbagged for a long time by the Italian government and a lot of other a, a lot of other Italian institutions, right? Uh, um, the Muro di Gama. Yeah, so uh, the, you, gotta, you gotta do the accent. The muro di gomma. The muro di gomma means the rubber wall, and that's what it's referred to because every time that like the families of the victims try and get any answers out of the Italian government, it just bounces off. Uh, especially because like they really had to pressure Cosiga to do an investigation into it, which eventually he caved. Which is and fucking weird, right? Like, if there's a plane crash that's, like, normal and unsuspicious, when you ask the president or the prime minister, hey, do you think we should do something about this? Normally, I think their reaction is not like, eh, uh, mm, no, I have to go now. To be fair, Alice, the all of the people who could have investigated it were, you know, on shop at all. They were striking, so it's fine. You know? <laughs> yep. The local, the local 69th Conspiracy Union was on strike. <laughs> <laughs> New merch idea. Mm. So after, after a long time, uh, Kasiga, who, he's the prime minister, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, he's president at the time that they do the investigation. He was prime minister. He resigned in 1980, and then he was elected. Basically again. interchangeable. I mean, who cares? I, don't. Yeah, I, I, I don't it doesn't know matter the because there's, it's the same clique of like 10 people that control the government. Yeah, it's, all the time. it's Jack Johnson and John Jackson. Who cares? Right. Yeah. He allows the French to investigate the underwater crash site, you know, with this 
this nice friendly ROV right here, you uh-huh. know, going, going on or whatever it's called. What's the under? It's underwater? called. No, it is an ROV. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah it's, 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 it's it's cute. It's a little yeah. like little photocopier underwater. Yeah. I kind of like it. Our name's yeah. on the side. They, they managed to find the cockpit voice recorder. You know, at the black box. Uh, but you know, it had been on the seafloor by like twelve years. Once they get it, Jesus. Um, that's a real Italian pacing there. I love it. But they're able they're <laughs> able to recover it by uh, thanks yeah. to a company that may or may not be owned by front companies of the French Secret Service, according to the Corriere de la Sera. But you know, mm. not suspicious. Oops. <laughs> well, y'all didn't get it, so I don't know what the fucking problem is. <laughs> yeah, you want it so bad, yeah. you go find it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, ah, manager. They sent the cockpit voice recorder to Washington D.C. To, to uh for investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board, right? Normal. Because the sky is American. All of us Americans. <laughs> yes. Therefore, yes. this is America's business. That's right? true. Yes. Yes. Unironically that. Well, that that's what the seas ocean. are. The seas the sea are is, owned by yeah, America. It says from <laughs> sea to shot. I'm sorry, you don't have a blue water navy or eleven <laughs> aircraft carriers. Maybe you should prioritize that. Eleven <laughs> aircraft carriers and one fewer helicopter carrier, as it's currently burning to the water line. That's fine. Yeah, we'll, we'll fix it. We'll build three more <laughs> with our many, yeah. many exactly. factories that we still have and are good. We have the replacement. The bo- no, we got the shipyards, baby. We can the rebuild it. We have the technology. Yes. <laughs> got it. They recover, uh, you know, they recover a lot of the plane. They re- recover it. They reassemble it as per the photo we put up before. Yeah, I think this was uh, one of the first big flagship cases for reconstructing an airplane from the wreckage of it. That hadn't really been it, done before. It was this in Lockerbie, I think. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Before that, that was, a, that was a stupid idea to be like, we just put the jigsaw puzzle back together in a mm-hmm. hangar. But this is one of the brilliant things about stupid ideas is sometimes they work. Hmm. Yes. So if it works and it's stupid, it's not stupid, Roz. True. <laughs> so they, they, and then some of it's sent to a British lab for chemical analysis, right? And this is the part where we need to talk about plastic explosives. Plastic! Uh, <laughs> thank you, Alice. Because we never trust the goddamn British. That's, that's right. true. That's true. We should be arresting them simply for the, I, the rule of threes. I had to put it in there. We're start, starting another war of eighteen twelve, but on our terms now. <laughs> I did yeah, tweet we're, out. We're taking we will burn, Canada. Burn Toronto again. Right. I, <laughs> I did tweet out last night at like midnight. Uh, you know, oh no, the British are awake again. It's time for me to put away my plans for taking revenge for the war of eighteen twelve. We're playing crimson, baby. Let's fucking go. <laughs> All right. Hearts of so iron. Gonna- we're going to draw a distinction here between plastic explosives and a different kind of, of uh, between plastics, pla- between plastic explosives and explosives with plastic in them, mm-hmm. right? Mm. Plasticized okay. explosives. Yeah. So your earliest plastic explosives were developed by Alfred Nobel, you know, the dynamite guy. He, he came out with something in 1875 called Galignite, right? Also known as blasting jelly. He kept hitting home runs and he didn't want to. He was like, no, actually, this is bad. But I, I hit it when I improperly store my blasting jelly and it grows a layer of mold. <laughs> 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 because, because I have a really fancy LA restaurant where I just sell blasting jelly to a bunch of hipsters for like yeah, fr- French toast yeah. with blasting jelly. And yes. oh, 19 bucks a plate, baby. <laughs> Fuck yeah. yeah. Oh. When you have a plastic explosive, right? Uh, plastic refers to how the explosive can be shaped and molded and deformed, right? Mm-hmm. Rather than using actual plastic, right? It's an adjective, not a yeah. noun. As uh, a lot of the early ones would use like paraffin wax or something like that as opposed to plastic because they didn't have any. Although they may use actual plastic in the formulation just to confuse you further, right? <laughs> in this now, case, right? It's, it's, helpful, it's helpful to think of it as uh, just a plastic just here means, like, squishable. Yes. Yeah. This is actually, this is good that I'm learning this because this is the one area that my material science class that I had to take when I was being an engineer, foolishly, uh, just did not cover at all. So, you know. Weird. That's uh, good. For some reason. 
for I'm some sorry, reason. The distinction between plastic and elastic. <laughs> uh, no, oh, I mean, God. it's just like literally right. like explosives not covered. <laughs> what do you mean, mean flammable and inflammable mean the same thing? <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> All right. So let's look at the parts, the parts of the explosive that explode, right? Oh, so, boy. <sighs> la, uh, boy. La, 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 la. <laughs> Alice, look out. About, <laughs> all we talk about in this podcast is organic chemistry, of course. Shit. Um, so first, we got to talk about RDX. That stands for Research Department Explosive. Right? <laughs> it's explosive starts with an E, not an X. <laughs> <laughs> so now you can see all these blue guys are nitrogen. That means it can go boom, right? Hmm. You, so is C more... also fertilizer? Yeah, it's but yes. it's also good fertilizer, so impossible to say if bad or good on this one. <laughs> Spreading plastic explosives in a thin sheet over my fields. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this one is actually a pretty bad fertilizer. Oh. <laughs> This was first synthesized in 1898 by George Friedrich Henning, uh, but production was not really perfected until the early years of World War II by the British, right? Our fault. Our fault. Our yeah. fault. So it's got, you know, per pound, it's got more energy than TNT because, you know, lots of nitrogens. So you can have a smaller and more explosive uh, charge, right? It's very, very stable. You can shoot it. It won't detonate, usually. Um, you can set it on fire. You can do a lot of stuff to it. Usually, won't detonate. It's also the main ingredient in C four, which incidentally right? means a fun fact that I learned. Um, it, it uh, you can burn small amounts of C four to use them as ration heaters. Ah. Uh, you oh yeah. Yep, you should yep. not do this, however, because it will create a fuck ton of extremely toxic gases. And so every couple yep. of years, you'll see a news story in Stars and Stripes or whatever that's like, oh, a couple of Marines got hospitalized again because they were like, instead of using the FRH in this MRE, we should just burn some C4. Oh, wait, what is cyanide gas? My entire body is shutting mm -hmm. down Actually, now. Oops. I, I have a question on this, which may be a stupid question because, uh, again, I switched out of being an engineer because I hated it, uh, and material science <laughs> and material Wise science decision, right? And material science was like one of the classes that d like dropped my GPA so low I almost lost my scholarship. But um, so if you if you have the like an RDX compound, do you will it explode on its own, or does it have to have a casing in order for it to build up the pressure in order to explode? I, I believe it just explodes on its own. Oh, very fun. Um, I think you need a proper detonator, right? Which brings us to the second chemical here, PETN. Hmm. That ah. stands for penta erythritol tetranitrate. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, la, la, la. Because there's, <laughs> there's, uh, yeah. there's four, there's four <laughs> nitrates. We can yeah. see the source of, of Al Qaeda. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> This was uh, also invented by the Germans uh, in 1894. It was used a lot in World War I. Less stable than RDX. Uh, still pretty commonly used, especially in detonators for like other plastic explosives. And it's the main ingredient in a few kinds of Semtex because there's lots of, apparently there's lots of different kinds of Semtex. I, I learned this today. Used often uh, by Albert, quote, Al, unquote, <laughs> <laughs> I, should, I, I should point out, since you asked, the, this is classified uh, RDXs as a secondary explosive, um, or, or sometimes a tertiary explosive. The difference is that like, they don't explode very sensitively on their own. You usually need to like detonate it with uh, a smaller charge of something more reactive. Got it. Well, they look very delicious, so, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> just something to not eat. So yeah, your, your Semtex and your C4, they're plastic explosives. They can be shaped by hand or with simple tools in the field. But now I have to get to talk about their counterpart, also made out of these components. You know, explosives made with plastic, which are not plastic explosives. Right? <laughs> oh boy, okay. <laughs> so With so, you so far. Yeah, so you, you combine these with certain plastics to form PBX, that's polymer bonded explosives, right? Mm-hmm. Man, you do so all of this complicated chemistry, and you still don't know that explosive starts with a fucking <laughs> e. Yes. So, so, so these are these are like they have plastic in them, but they're not deformable. They're not ductile. 
Yeah, you can't really do it by hand like you can with the plastic explosives, right? Okay. To hold their shape at room temperature, right? Got it. So you can take PBX and you can shape it into complex shapes. You can mold them at high pressure. You can even mill some of them on a CNC machine. <laughs> Just right? using my big fucking turret lathe on some explosives. Filing that you one can, away. You can extrude <laughs> them. You can extrude them like the pasta. <laughs> the forbidden pasta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, um, like, oh no, that's the Don't want to touch my spaghetti! Oh no, that's the spicy rigatoni that we all did. Stop eating spaghetti if you're careful enough. <laughs> oh, Lord. So, one of the things these guys are used for, I mean, they're used for shaped charges, of course, because you can shape them easy. Uh, sometimes you can make them so they're like rubbery so they're more shock resistant right um they're also very good for nuclear explosives right so you can form what's called an explosive lens and that's sort of like the um the way you 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 have a shaped charge inside the nuclear warhead in order to properly squish the nuclear material into itself to uh achieve supercriticality right mm -hmm. nope no thank you i would simply yeah. not do that Explosive no, lines. you have Good to, or it won't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's also used in conventional sep uh, conventional weapons, such as the Sidewinder missile, right? That uses a sort of hollow steel spring, right? That's filled with PBX N3, and that's 85% RBX, 15% nylon, right? And that allows it to achieve a specific yeah. explosive pattern right mm. you cast debris out in as wide an area as possible so you don't have like near misses oh yeah it goes into like a circle because it's 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 like a bunch of uh steel bars which are welded together alternately at each end so it like expands out into a big ring yeah it's just cool like thing. chain shot but like what, oh yeah can we just go back to using like bronze cannons to storm the walls of constantinople like <laughs> yeah, embrace be, be, embrace yeah. tradition, reject modernity. <laughs> you, you think the warfare has gotten too modern? It has. I miss the days when people had like these big puffy sleeves on their outfits, and they had mm. like hikes and shit. And like ninety percent of casualties were just because you got tuberculosis or like legionnaires' disease out in the field. You know. Call of Duty. Trebuchets. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give them ideas. I would play that. I, actually, I think that's just Mountain Blade Warband. <laughs> uh, I, 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 see, I see you have a slide here that requires like some sensitive and, and tactful drops that... Terrorists uh... <laughs> win. Oh. <laughs> this is a very this is a I, I just wanna I I wanna point out again because I'm here to defend Italians. This is a placeholder slide that just kind of like yeah. this is just where we're at. <laughs> Um, uh, I, I, again, you know, I love Italy, um, and, uh, please don't ban me from visiting because it is my ambition to die in an apartment in Rome. Um, hmm. yeah. Don't care how. So we're, we're, we're doing, we're doing some, we're doing Rashomon here, right? Because, uh, because this did the spooky mystery thing of just fucking blowing up or something, uh, and just disappearing. We don't know what happened. All we can have are theories, and we're going to present those theories to you. That's um, not how I remember it. Precisely. <laughs> and so this is theory one. Uh, somebody put a fucking bomb in the turlet. <laughs> <laughs> Me yeah. after my morning coffee. <laughs> so log it out. Baby. Yeah, yeah. So they, you know, they just reached in a tissue holder built in the wall, put a small quantity of plastic explosives wrapped in sheeting uh, right up against the frame of the aircraft, and that goes off on a timer. At some point, the plane splits in half in midair. No warning. The front goes in the Mediterranean more or less vertically, right? Mm -hmm. um, like it's, now, it's also that's that's borne out by the cockpit voice recorder because those dudes had no idea what was going on. Like it oh, just yeah, ends yeah. with a dude just going like what, and then it just ends. Right now, <laughs> again, what we have of the cockpit voice recorder does oh, yeah. say that. Yes, uh, you know, let's. Uh, but it's basically that they don't even get a full sentence out before it just cuts out, which is cool and fine, normal. Hmm. We can say with relative certainty that the uh, 
the plane did go nose down into the Mediterranean, right? Because of how the way the front of the wreckage is deformed, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of crumpled like an accordion, you know? Right. Which, and it's, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and th this, we get all of this detail from the British report, um, right. which like got into some, some highly technical stuff about the like actual fuselage wreckage. And it also contains this sentence, which I enjoyed because I'm a child. Um, it is still firmly believed that no initial event other than an internal explosion in this area can explain the extensive, violent, and consistent mm -hmm. movement outwards and away from the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Which oh, is a boy. fucking I, I, mood, let me tell you. Just I, I, uh, IBS it, posts. It, 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 me when I had to yes. drop a deuce <laughs> in the club. <laughs> Someone had a couple too many uh, spicy meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he had the forbidden, the, the forbidden spicy explosive rigatoni, and you know, just blew up. <laughs> to right oh no, I feel like been eating pasta, but instead it was <laughs> pasta explosives. <laughs> <laughs> and the, 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 the sauce, spicy meatball. The sauce was <laughs> gently spiced with a secondary <laughs> explosive. <laughs> <laughs> when they added pecorino romano on top, created the ultimate, uh, you know, an ultimate <laughs> accidental explosion. Um, mm. So, so there, there is, yeah. Now that's so there's what your I terrorism. Call a pasta alla rabbiata. Cancelled. <laughs> Cut his mic. <laughs> they, made, they, they made it. They made the sauce with nitroglycerin, but also really good tomatoes. Still, right? You know, which gonna, which they imported from the Netherlands for some reason, because that's what Italy is now doing with most of its tomatoes. Hmm. Oh my god! There's no rail. In, there's not a good rail infrastructure to get tomatoes up from the south, where they are better. Still not fixed. Jesus Christ. Like, the, is this why I can't get San Marzano's anymore? Well, yes. you can get really shitty San Marzano's, but yeah, that's that's part of the reason. Um, I mean, you know, everybody's like, oh, ma Mussolini ha fatto anche delle buone cose. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, well, then where are those buone cose in regards to the railways in the Mezzogiorno, huh? Are you saying he huh? didn't make the trains run on time? Actually, in fact, there is empirical evidence to support that the trains ran less well under Mussolini. <laughs> so if, if you were on the fence about doing fascism, please do not, because it does make the trains worse. Because the trains are worse. Right, yes. Yes. that's true. Um, so, so this is this is like so. W what we're proposing here is that somebody does some terrorism by like blowing up the toilet. Yeah, and, um, and I want to I want to yeah. say there's a note in here that says that like you know uh, when you do terrorism, there's a political motive and people show up, but. When you do terrorism in Italy in the 70s and 80s uh, and 60s, there actually when you do terrorism in Italy in the entire second half of the 20th century, the, the assigning a motive to uh, uh, like people and like the the responsibility is very unclear. It's not like, you know, when you when you have like a shoe bomber who's like, "Ah, I'm working with ISIS." Uh, you know, it's uh, you know, because he went to the HR director for ISIS and was like, "Hello, I'm looking for a job." And they were like, "Well, what are your qualifications?" Hmm. Well, like, it, it, that's that's also somewhat murkier because, like, generally, what happens when you have claims of responsibility for an Islamic terrorist attack is, unless it's one of the like big guys like ISIS or Al Qaeda, you will find that like people claim responsibility in the name of groups no one has ever heard of that right. are probably just fronts for other groups. Right. So, like, you'll find that like, ah, oh, it's the the Ansar al Din of you know fucking. Stoke Newington or wherever, and that's exactly um, what happens uh, here. With, with except red guards in Austin, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> oh God, jeez, it's the Chicago Maoists who are like, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna instead of building public housing, we're just gonna build. Uh, we're gonna plant vegetables in this oil. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Illinois Nazis. Yeah, um, <laughs> I hate yeah. Illinois Nazis. Well, you know, the, I hate Illinois Nazis too because I once had to work as a. I once had to work uh, doing uh, street canvassing for the ACLU in Chicago, which is my hometown. And uh, everybody got mad at me because everybody remembered the time that the ACLU defended Nazis' rights to march through Skokie, a primarily Jewish neighborhood. So what I'm saying is, fuck that. Fuck the ACLU. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, anti-ACLU podcast. For the most yes. part. Uh, you know, they're just they're liberal brain so, worms. What, what, we're, what we're saying here is that it's it's potentially a little bit weird that like nobody's claiming responsibility for this, but on the other hand, it's not unheard of. It's it's like also like nobody claimed responsibility for like Piazza Fontana. They just found a guy and pinned it on him, and then later were like, oh nope, it was fascists. 
Um, hmm. <laughs> whoops. whoops. He, fa- he fell out of this fourth floor window. Or like the Bologna thing, which we'll talk about there, like, Somebody claimed Two responsibility. Slides time. Yeah. Yes. No, we'll talk about that. But like, somebody claimed responsibility. <laughs> I, I, I do want to point out that the 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 placeholder note text for this slide simply says "jacked up toilet picks." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bathrooms with threatening auras. <laughs> they found traces uh, of RDX on the plane, right? Hmm. They also find some weird uranium byproducts, right? Normal. I'm that's fine. sure that's fine. But like, also, it was the '80s, and they had only just gotten rid of the Fiesta ware that is radioactive. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what it's going to be is because '80s Italy is every conspiracy theory at once. There was just independently like a suitcase nuke on the plane <laughs> for different unrelated reasons. No, it was it was they were eating the the explosive spicy pasta in uh, Fiesta ware uranium bowl. <laughs> Uh, I love to get on the plane and play with my radium chemistry set. <laughs> but yeah, so here's some images showing how the, the the bathroom blew up, indicating the bomb was in the bathroom. Yeah, weird how you right. would know to like put the bomb inside the toilet tissue holder because that's right up against the like actual airframe. That's weird. Well, that is. I, weird. I mean, I assume they have some amount of spatial awareness, like they can. Mm-hmm. Find out that oh yeah, the bathroom is next to the no, end, no, no, the no, side no, of the no, plane. No. You know, I guess I'm, so. I'm kind of like like I don't when I open the door to the bathroom in the plane, I don't suddenly like lose object permanence, right? <laughs> oh, that's, that's just right. Don't brag much. <laughs> what is my butthole? Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Uh, oh, so. Isn't it also like next to the engine, the bathroom on this plane? Uh, it's it's kind of it's towards it's like in the rear third. So yeah, it's pretty close. It's over the back yeah, of the okay. wing, and then uh, yeah. So if you wanted to like blow up a plane as like cleanly as possible, this would be how. Uh, which suggests that if it, if there's a guy, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> not related. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, in this picture, in this picture, you will see an agent for operation. This is taken in the Bologna train. An agent for Operation Gladio uh, standing in front of Bologna. With with a plastic explosive bomb. Uh, it, <laughs> the funniest portion of this image is that of I, rigatoni. <laughs> <laughs> That's just like a carrying case for the bomb. It just happens to look like a cartoon bomb. The funniest portion mm-hmm. of this image. Rigatoni to blow. Yeah. The, the funniest part of this is I already had this made before this podcast. Yeah, thanks for to no another. Reason. Thanks to another bit that we did. So like. My, my, no, my favorite part is the Gladio chef's hat. <laughs> well, you gotta make that. You gotta make the explosive lasagna. You That's know? right. Yeah. So um, this is this is hmm. through the pasta through like the hand crank pasta machine. <laughs> over and over. <laughs> so this is this is the Bologna bombing, right? Which we're treating with the gravity and seriousness that uh, we're known for. Which uh, um, like the the hmm. thing about this is that uh, it's important to remember again that this is where the plane came from. Bologna is mm-hmm. known to be a very like left wing region. It's called the Regione Rossa because it's like the red region. And uh, and uh, again, remember that Francesco Cosiga is like famous for putting down student riots in Bologna uh, that were like very left wing, very communist. So this is a big communist stronghold. And basically, there is a um, you know there's an air conditioned waiting room in uh, in the Bologna train station, which I don't think you can see in this particular slide. I think it might actually be on the left in this slide, that little building to the left. I'm pointing with my finger as if you can see it, but um, and Over basically, here is where I hit the worst. Yeah, no, I think that's the spot. I'm not entirely sure because it's there are other pictures that are just like a different angle. But basically, it's an air conditioned waiting room, and Bologna got very hot that summer. This is in August. And this is right after, like, literally, like, you know, like a month after the, uh, the Ustica thing. Um, and uh, there's like a hundred people in there and it explodes all of a sudden. There's a bomb in a suitcase and it blows up and it kills a bunch of people. 
Uh, again, I'm really glad that we treated this with the seriousness that it deserves, so that we didn't <laughs> yeah, come across right. it. I will certainly not use any drops of terrorists win. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, again, again, please don't ban me from Italy, a country to which I really need to emigrate immediately. Um, but so the thing is, the this bombing uh, is uh, real interesting because uh, initially, like, a, uh, you know, a call comes in saying that a neo-fascist terrorist group set it off. But then they trace the call and it's coming from SISMI headquarters, which is the Italian intelligence service. <laughs> Once again, uh, between this and the Moro thing, it's like this barely covering your tracks thing. Not even really. Right. But it's yeah. also it's interesting. Just, it's, just... it's very interesting that this bombing happens in such quick succession after the Ustica thing. And then, like a month after this, all the names of the Propaganda Due members are leaked. And then there's the Banco Ambrosiano scandal, and Roberto Calvi dies, and it all happens in pretty quick succession. And, Cosiga also resides. Um, so, you know, I don't know who could have done this, you know? who? Oh, also, Francesco Cosiga blamed this on Palestinians, which, like, again, real. <laughs> Just yeah. thank you. I, I, we, have, we have no idea who could have done this. Next slide, please. <laughs> Palestinians as hell. <laughs> Picture unrelated. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is this is our like unified theory one, right? Is Gladio in some like whether controlled or not, uh in some way uses some of those American supplied explosives and uh like just blows up the plane. So happens. I actually I actually have a corollary theory to this, which is that essentially I my my in there, there's a really interesting thing to note about, and I think Ross pointed this out, that like um, there is the two-hour delay in the mm. plane on the, mm -hmm. the bomb timer. Uh, yeah, because Italy is an efficient yeah. country. And if the yes. plane had been allowed to reach, the, uh, reach its destination, it would have landed in the Palermo airport, which is a flashpoint of conflict between local communists and uh, a mob boss uh, whose name was Gaetano Badalamenti, who was like very closely tied in with Giulio Andreotti, who was one of these DC vultures who like all controlled the government. And allegedly, Giulio Andreotti used this guy to uh, do a murder of a journalist and like a bunch oh. of other shit. Allegedly, yeah. it's not been, he was charged of a bunch of things and then <laughs> cleared. And he was like, uh, you know, he was like, oh, I have been, except for the Punic Wars, which I was too young to be a part of, mm -hmm. I've been accused of everything bad in Italy. And I was like, Ugh. Okay. I mean, so don't, don't tweet about that. No, I'm <laughs> tweeting about that. <laughs> so th th that's, that's, I like this theory. It's a good mix of uh, like malice and incompetence at the same but, time. But there's also, like, yeah, we try to blow up this airport. But there's also what I think is happening is that this is a situation where there is mass lack of coordination within the Gladio Stay Behind network. So you have multiple people just going out and doing all these bombings and drawing a lot of attention to it. So if I were the U.S. government and I wanted to wrap up this whole thing without incident, I would theoretically put out a name of all of these people and discredit them and have them removed from their government positions while not touching the very highly placed people like Giulio Andreotti and Francesco Cosiga, who I have as my assets. And in fact, you know, there afterward, there are CIA people who are skulking around Milan and being like, "So tell me about Gladio. Anybody still involved with Gladio around here?" And I'm like, mm. <laughs> "The tax <laughs> insensitivity. <laughs> like, you think we're bad? The CIA is worse." Oh yeah, yeah. So and 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 I, you know, I, I don't know whether it was like, and you know, some sort of schism going on in Gladio, which it could have been. Uh, or some sort of, uh, you know, some sort of uh, rounding up of or, and wrapping up of the operation now that the Soviet Union was starting to sort of fall and you're moving from the the domestic disasters of the Carter administration, the foreign disasters of the Carter administration to like the Reagan administration and all that, uh, mm. who they were or, collaborating or just with. Like, or just like an inflection point of like, this gets to be too much, even for the US. Yeah. And they're just like, no, you, you, you can't just be bombing shit at random anymore, that's our job. Yeah, and, and then, you know, you can't be bombing shit at random in Europe. 
when we move to the Middle East, that is where we will relocate our bombing shit at random operations. Can't get any good, can't get any good help these days. Gotta do everything. We're, opening, we're closing our regional franchise of the CIA bombing shit association and opening <laughs> a new regional franchise in Saudi Arabia. I mean, when a guy <laughs> comes in from corporate, I mean that it basically was Pete Buttigieg's job. Either yeah. whether you believe he, yeah. in the CIA or not, is just be being the guy from corporate who flies <laughs> yeah, in and yeah. tells you you're doing. Doing everything wrong. Like the yeah. guy from corporate who flies into like Somaliland and is like, no, no, you're supposed to be growing opium. Come on. Uh, yeah, the, the Pete's come in and say, what would you say you do here? <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, listen, I put, I planted that bomb in that train station that killed all those people. And they're just like, yeah, uh, well, you know, what, what have you done for us lately? Well, they're trying to increase they come, they your stapler away. <laughs> they're trying to somewhere there's an Italian fucking office space guy. <laughs> no, somewhere in Italy, I guarantee you there is a guy named Pietro Budagetto and like, you know, <laughs> Pietro Budagetto and he's like, you know, exactly, he's just like constantly going like Siamo na gente, <laughs> etc. <cetera. laughs> you know, um, okay, so that's that's one theory. That's, they were that's trying Rashomon to, one. They were trying to diversify yeah. their uh, their workforce uh, and interrogate more bodies and spaces. That's the theory. <laughs> <laughs> Roll on to the next slide. Ah, Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> <laughs> that's not how I remember it. <laughs> yeah, we're rolling it back. That's not what happened. What happened is remember that thing about PBX, about the like composition of explosives in Sidewinder air to air missiles? And this that's... is a Sidewinder, by the way, the snake. Oh, it's very it's very cute. It's um, very, very cute. So I'll it's murder you. So the whole time. After the crash, there are these secret diplomatic cables flying around between various members of NATO, which is weird, right? Like, for an unsuspicious plane crash. And in one of these cables, they say, huh, well, you know, we said it was it was RDX from, like, uh, C4, but uh, actually it was this PBX compound that's used in uh, air-to-air missiles, uh, and which would lead you. Uh, hmm. They specifically mention it's used in one of three types of missiles, and I, uh, I, I, I think I don't know if they got the facts wrong or they just knew something we didn't. Um, but they said it was either a Sidewinder, a Sparrow, or Matra, and the first two of those were uh, U.S. and the last one was French. So normal. Hmm. So just yeah, so somebody was carrying in their checked baggage an American or French <laughs> air-to-air missile. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time that somebody blew up the toilet and like took out somebody's uranium collection. Well, they can't let you do. You can't do that anymore because they they don't let you. They don't let you carry more than like three ounces <laughs> of a sidewinder. Yeah, back, missile in, back in the day, plane. Italian airport security was just a guy waves your air to air missile onto the like plane as like carry on. Excuse me, that's not a carry on. That's my wife. <laughs> I, I have a theory about the uranium, but that will be revealed at a future time. Okay, okay all right. So, I'm excited. So, so what, what we're suggesting here is the plane gets shot down by a fighter jet? Yes. Um, and I, I, again, these are diplomatic cables. They continue after the thing, and like, there's a lot mm -hmm. of uh, talking about like what evidence they can really get out of the plane well, and things of that nature. The, they send the British. Uh, uh, they they go to the British consulate, and they're like, uh, uh, they're just like, real sorry, old chap, but could you uh, go to down to the lab and find out what you could really get out of that plane? You mm -hmm. know, <laughs> oh, pip, pip, yeah, one, one of those questions mm -hmm. you ask while waggling your eyebrows theatrically. That's what British people sound like to me. That's just a fucking idea too. He's just like, man, like, you want me to find a watch or what? Gotta strap on the rebreather, just like looking for some <laughs> asshole's grandfather's pocket watch. I don't know, fuck, I'm supposed to be looking for it. I missed lunch. <laughs> uh, gotta go back down there again. Jesus Christ. You gotta take your cigarette break underwater. <laughs> mm. <laughs> So like so the, again, the sniper hmm. you. Well, we 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 come back to um, the same question as with the bombing, which is: 
do you do something like this by accident or on purpose? And again, yes. this plane, two and a half hours late, um, there is a suggestion. I, do, I personally do not buy this, but there is a suggestion that the Italian Air Force, known for their, their competence and their restraint, are doing some, uh, like some training, and then, huh, all of a sudden, there's a flight in airspace where it's not supposed to be. At night! And then, at night, and, hey Luigi, I shoot down the airliner. Oops, it is Liano. veramente un guazzabuglio, right? Oh, by the way, great Italian word, guazzabuglio. Great, the huge mess is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it basically <laughs> translates to clusterfuck. Uh, by the way, I also want to <laughs> defend Italians again by saying that Italy had the best air force in the world uh, until Mussolini and was shooting like shooting down airline. Oh no! Until until <laughs> Mussolini was yeah, shooting down airline. No, Just I'm, painting. <laughs> yeah, we, we we break the case wide open as we zoom in really far mm -hmm. on this photo and find like a little like yeah. painted silhouette of a passenger plane. That's <laughs> only because we're in the United States. We use the Navy to shoot down airliners. That's true. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. That's true. But, <laughs> they but keep I, doing it. I do want to say. I do want to say. <laughs> We we had er, the, the the Italians had the best uh, you know air force in the world, and we're one of the first militaries to really use planes and spin off an air force. Until Mussolini was like, uh, I don't like this guy who does the air force. So. <laughs> yeah, well, watch watch the documentary Porco Rosso. Yeah, that's um, true. I better be I'd rather be a fascist, than, or I'd rather be a pig than a fascist. So you know, that's right. You know. Uh, so yeah, and and we have we have a we have a next slide of this, which is. The Ramstein air disaster. Uh, is that a new album? The <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it, it, like the the Italian Air Force is doing aerobatics, and due to a slight miscalculupsy, um, just fully takes out. I think it was like two fast jets, and then a bunch of spectators on the ground. Um, they were all also involved in the conspiracy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, they knew too much. It's collateral like, damage. Every, every single one of them was about to shoot the, the other one with Sylvia. a silenced pistol, <laughs> and then... The, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, no, I mean, the thing is, they both knew about the impending return of Mussolini, who had survived <laughs> his attack. And because Mussolini is the occluded imam of Gladio. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So... Yeah. so yeah, Futurama head in a jar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah, the, the, this is this is part of the Mura di Goma, right? If, if depending, it, it's it's apt that it's di Goma, right? Because it is elastic in that sense. You can stretch things as much as you want to include them being part of this cover up, up to and including uh, both of these pilots who died in the Ramstein Air Force uh, air show disaster. Like, knew too much, and maybe they were the ones who shot down the plane. Right. It's um, ironic that it's elastic when it has to do with plastic explosives. <laughs> yeah. I, I would also yeah. like to add, though, um, as a counterpoint, two of the guys involved, uh, the, the upper level uh, Air Force guys involved, uh, died in suicides. Uh, one mm -hmm. of them just slit his throat uh, casually and did not leave a note. And at the funeral, the families, <laughs> the families were told explicitly not to get an autopsy. And also, a third guy just died of a heart attack at 37. Uh, no word on his <laughs> On tonight's episode of The X-Files, we investigate the hyoid bone. <laughs> yeah, but like, I remember there was another one of like, uh, an air traffic controller who was on duty that night, being like, telling his wife, yeah, I think I kind of saw something I wasn't really supposed to, I don't know what's <laughs> up with that, I'm feeling kind of nervous about it, and then just like, does not come home. Weird. Um, so like, I'm obviously sure there is, there is some cover-up happening, uh, who could be responsible for this? Next slide, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's that? What's with that unrelated photo? <laughs> yeah. Why does? How does this keep getting into our slides? <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I keep I keep copying it and putting increasingly vulgar jokes in the notes, which we can't read aloud because they're too spicy for the. Uh, you know, they're too spicy <laughs> well, for yeah. radio. What What if Alan Dull <laughs> in relation to? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
You know, uh, what this podcast has been censored by the American Central Intelligence Agency. <laughs> <laughs> this broadcast has been ended, and we will now switch over to NPR. This is WBEZ 91.5. I'm Linda Lawrence. <laughs> Welcome to Morning Edition. I'm Steven Ski. Welcome to Morning Edition. I'm Steven Ski. From an undisclosed location, as a as I was kidnapped in the middle of the night for knowing too much. Coming to you from the trunk of a Renault Five. And I'm Linda Bertheimer. All right, but that's, so that's Rashomon 2. Rashomon 3. <laughs> Our boy! What really happened? Uh, who is this yeah. cool guy? Do, do you remember <laughs> Muammar Gaddafi? Pepperidge Farms remembers. Uh, <laughs> so, this, this, Muammar Gaddafi, you may be familiar, uh, used to be you may uh, remember the, dictator, <laughs> the, the, the dictator of Libya until he was compromised to a permanent end by Hillary Clinton. Um, when body count! <laughs> Cert <laughs> <laughs> ain't going away. The funniest yeah. I've ever found Hillary Clinton is when she said, uh, we came, we saw he died after after Gaddafi was like shot. Uh, that was, and, yeah, her that poetic was instinct. It yeah. was pretty funny. So, you, gotta, you gotta hand it to her. So Gaddafi <laughs> is is like uh, I guess doing agents of chaos stuff. He's the dang <laughs> Joker, right? His actual ideology <laughs> changes based on uh, like the needs. M- we much live like in Saddam Hussein, actually. Socialist <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Like, so, so he's like he's socialist if this, like, if the Soviet Union will help him out. He's a pan-Arabist if the Arab states will help him out. He's pan-African if the African states will help him out. Um, he he will like torture people on behalf of British intelligence <laughs> and the CIA if. They'll help him out. It avails him not at all because, like, eventually the Clinton crime family gets to him. But <laughs> had a pretty good he's run. a compromise <laughs> builder. He builds consensus. Yeah, that's true. He's so in the eighties. In the eighties, he is doing this thing where he's like, "Fuck the West," specifically. Um, I'm I gonna agree. like. I'm like, yeah, but like in a way Shut that off. like I'm going to like uh, be a bad guy in the Naked Gun too. Uh, so like. <laughs> oh, I'm, God, I'm, 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 uh, I'll arm the good guys like the IRA um, and like send them a shit ton of AKs Thanks, and stuff. <laughs> yeah, but like not for any particular reason other than just to fuck with the British, which is cool. I I agree that is good, but it kind of means that as a consequence of this, everybody wants to kill him. Like Hillary Clinton's bloodlust for this guy <laughs> did not come from nowhere, right? Like Ronald <laughs> Reagan tries to have him assassinated with airstrikes like at least two times. So he's Middle Eastern Castro. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, except he, he like not as dodges cool. Yeah, he dodges all of these bullets. Um and uh, again, I-, I cannot stress enough, the US government has prior form for trying to kill this guy with fighter jets, right? Um, and everybody in NATO hates him except for, uh, well, like the IRA, I suppose, and Italy, because Italy used to be the colonial occupier of Libya, and as such, you get this really weird vibe. Do not ask kind of... what happened to the Senussi order. Do not ask. <laughs> <laughs> but like, genuinely, it's it's strange. Italy is the only colonial power that seems to bother ever feeling guilty about doing colonialism, which is very, very weird considering they did it as part of fascism. It's in because part. they're it's because Italians are good hearted people who are nice and yeah. wonderful and we support so, them. So the Italian state, like all of these like uh, Jack Johnson and John Jackson guys, still have this really kind of patriarchal view of Libya as being like, oh well, you know, you, Gaddafi, you help the guy out for old times' sake, and okay, maybe he gives you a, like a million dollars in a suitcase, but that's just like what friends do. And sometimes, yeah, yeah. sometimes he sends you prostitutes if you're Silvio Berlusconi, and that's good, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you you have a working relationship with this guy. Um, and so, the, you know, occasionally he has to come to Europe to buy new epaulettes and like new uniform <laughs> supplies. I, I I take most of my fashion cues from like eighties period Gaddafi here, the sick <laughs> double breasted tunic, just incredibly pimp. Um, so like he okay fine the guy the guy wants to like fly to Paris. He, he needs an air corridor to do that. And what if you just kind of give him Italian airspace and you do this on the quiet on and off for years and years and years and years. Um, so what if 
the the people who want to kill this guy, the U.S. like the foreign policy blob, the fun police, bad guys. Yes, the fun police, the bad guys decide. Okay, well, look, shooting down a, a, a high value target's plane in transit, it worked for killing Isoroku Yamamoto, right? Um, <laughs> Why the fuck not? Why don't we just quietly scramble some fast jets and then he just disappears over the ocean like our like our plane did? Um, easy peasy. Easy peasy. Except it's night, uh, and then all of a sudden, where you're looking for like a small VIP jet, there's a small passenger jet that's in a place where it shouldn't be because it's two and a half hours late, and then. Oops, it is Eliano. You have just shot down the fucking uh, Itavia plane, and Gaddafi escapes unscathed yet again because, again, a, like history is very kind to dictators like this until it isn't. And much like Castro, he just kind of keeps getting away with it. But Alice, it's very important <laughs> that we kill Gaddafi because the only way to revitalize some of Libya's most important industries is to kill Gaddafi. <laughs> and now that we've yeah. done that, we can once again bring slave markets back to Libya, and that's what freedom is. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, the economic engine of the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, Knights of the Golden Circle were on the wrong set of continents. I, I see that for oil. We're not just here for oil. Shut up, liberation. I see liberation. that we're like. I see that we're like bringing back like some sort of warped version of the Sultanate of Ifriqiya here. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> that's a real deep cut Ramsey Ruigi shout out uh, you know mm. yeah. I think um, they should have just let Gaddafi do all of the weird shit he wanted to like when he just decided oh, yeah. he was a pan-Africanist and he was like I'm just gonna wear a leopard skin now and invade Chad and get fucking owned by a bunch of dudes <laughs> in Toyotas the Chad, look Chad at my and bodyguards look at my hot bodyguards <laughs> <laughs> the world is the worst place without Muammar yeah. Gaddafi yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's true. I mean, genuinely, yes. <laughs> like, objectively speaking, yeah. <laughs> Once again, Hillary Clinton screwing shit up. <laughs> it's, very, it's very important that we once again talk about how Hillary Clinton helped create ISIS in the in the modern world. She, she, she took Gaddafi and gave us Trump. <laughs> Love that. We anyway, used to have hope, jobs, and cash, and now. <laughs> Alice, do you have like a fight song drop, or do I need to sing it? A, a fight song? I mean. Yeah, no, a fight uh, song drop. Like, you know, this is. No, 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 no. Not like that kind of fight song. I mean, like, this you is a fight song. Single yeah. fight song. Yeah. You're oh, idiot. fuck. Take I'm back my life song. I do not have I do not have a Clinton drop. I'm sorry. I should I should have thought ahead. Uh, uh, it's okay. I know. So we have another Neither another movement. weird detail that crops up. You keep putting together these weird details, and it's like yeah, it's strange. Yeah. A bunch of weird, unrelated coincidences. If you would just uh, stop looking at it, <laughs> <laughs> I pretend I do not see, but actually I do. Uh, so a couple of weeks after they find the like floating bodies and wreckage, uh, independently they find a Libyan MiG twenty three fighter jet just crashed into a mountain in southern Calabria, which is like the back of beyond. So it takes them that long to even notice. Pilot's dead inside, and it's just it's wreckage, right? But like, how the what the fuck is a Libyan fighter jet doing in Italy? Crashing. None of your goddamn business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we we have we have the flight path. It's here. anti-colonialism. Um, well, like the the, the official back. the official <laughs> explanation for this. See how y'all like it. <laughs> see if you see if you believe this. Is that the guy flying it, uh, Captain Khalil, does not know how to fly a plane because he, like the the Libyans, are, as part of this pan Arabist thing that Gaddafi is doing, they're training Palestinians to fly jets. Um, the Palestinians use Arabic in the cockpit; the Libyans speak English, so there's a miscommunication. The guy forgets to turn his oxygen supply on and just like hypoxically drifts across the entire Mediterranean. The same time, because every conspiracy is true and happening at once. The same time as this plane is like blowing up for unrelated reasons, mm. smacks into a mountainside. Um, and nobody like notices this. He just gets into NATO airspace. No one cares. Uh, this massive cover up of this, and it's just a coincidence. I do believe this because also the MiG did not have weapons on board, and it was outfitted for practice, according to the people who discovered the MiG. Which 
you know, uh, they would have an incentive to lie the other way. You know, well, the, the 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 other the other narrative, it, which to me makes more sense, especially if you believe that those people are you know lying, is that okay, fine. Gaddafi is is Gaddafi's busy flying across uh, the Mediterranean. He's not stupid. He knows the Americans would like to kill him. He gets he gets some fighter cover, and you just have this this like sort of implicit uh, idea of well, maybe there's a fucking dogfight between like NATO assassin planes and Libyan mix. That's too cool not to be true. True. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, and I then that. It, it, in that chaos, somebody gets a missile lock on the wrong thing, shoots down the plane. I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna refer to the next slide for my opinion on this particular one. In conclusion, <laughs> Libya is a land of contrast. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Alice, bring back Libyan Bart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, I would like to say that the notes on this say, because I'm a hack, Libya, I barely know ya. <laughs> <laughs> uh, got him. Yeah. Got him. <laughs> right. Again, who could be responsible for this. Who, who, how do these <laughs> slides keep getting into the notes? Um, so, Justin, what's this? What's the what's the uranium theory? Does that fit in here? It would seem fairly obvious to me, right? Okay, so like they found PBX on the plane, mm-hmm. right? And they found uranium on the plane, right? Mm-hmm. Uranium right. residue. PBX is used for, you know, the explosive casing of nuclear weapons, right? Oh. Obviously, what happened was, what happened was, <laughs> and, uh, uh, Giuseppe's, like, atomic weapons factory, um, you know, Why there were they let them ship stuff? <laughs> their union, and it was in their contract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I imagine like a couple nuclear warheads didn't pass quality control, right? And, you know, they don't want to reuse the PBX. It's all irradiated, right? So they, they throw that out back, you know, and then Gladio uh, Luigi uh, mentions to Giuseppe, who runs the shop one day, hey, can I, uh, can I grab some of that um, PBX out back? I'm not going to touch it for long. It should be fine. Mm-hmm. And Giuseppe <laughs> shrugs his shoulders and he's like, not my problem. And, uh, <laughs> and, you know, they use it to blow up this plane for whatever reason. It fell off the back know. of a truck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, this makes a lot of sense to me. I, I don't know. I, well, I, 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 this, this adequately explains it using incompetence. Right? No, that, that, that does make <laughs> sense. But what if also like, okay, real tinfoil hat time. What if that plane was going to carry, uh, what if, just combining all three of these, uh, four of mm. these rather, what if that plane was going to be carrying uh, fissile nuclear material to Libya uh, and was intercepted and blown up by Gladio with unacceptable civilian casualties? So they're like, okay, maybe don't do this. Gladio retaliates by blowing up the Bologna train station bombing, and the CIA retaliates by leaking the names of all the Propaganda Due members and mm-hmm. crippling their operations in Italy. Mm-hmm. You know what I should have got as a drop for Genius. this? Is the Hank Scorpio episode of The Simpsons where the <laughs> UN guy's like, maybe it just <laughs> fell down on its own. <laughs> also, also, you know, the... the, the I wife, want to take a chance. Uh, what's the UN gonna do? Send me a strongly worded letter? <laughs> so, I, don't know, I, I like I think the that, idea they're they're trying to bring in the fissile material to li- to, to Libya, and you know they, they land at Palermo, and then they have to explain to the passengers, "I'm sorry, we lost all your luggage." Well, they, they, they don't have to, have to do that because, because had, back remember back who owns there. the airport? The, uh, the airport oh, yeah. is owned by a by the way, uh, you know, by by a mafia boss who had recently had uh, the only guy who was like really leading the opposition to bulldozing a poor neighborhood to build a third runway. Uh, recently had that guy assassinated and was thus in complete control of the airport at the time that, is like... Italy real? Uh, they would still have to lose yeah. all the luggage in order to be able to take off. Fair, <laughs> fair. But, but... Just pushing shit out onto the runway? I don't know. I, yeah. think, yeah. this, I think this adequately explains... <laughs> 71 you know people this is. radiation sickness yeah, like... <laughs> after all being on the same plane. <laughs> you know what this is? This Mama, is, this is the counter. onion... <laughs> the retrospective onion headline JFK assassinated by CIA Cuban Soviets Teamsters Unions uh, Mafia. 
President <laughs> shot 127 different times from 60 <laughs> different angles. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> well, I, oh, I, I think forgot that... to mention that the, uh, the PBX in this theory is Rotini. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that, you know, I think I, uh, I, uh, I, I think that theory adequately explains a lot of elements of this. And what is this weird red dot on my forehead? <laughs> I, I don't uh, know. Next slide, please. <laughs> so uh, we're, we're kind of wrapping this up, right? This is this is a picture of some Italian judges, not the ones that we're talking about. These, These are, are the Amanda, Amanda Knox, Knox ones. ones. And by the way, it says on the back wall behind them, the law is equal for all. Um, La legge oh, è uguale per tutti. <laughs> Unless you're like very, Gladio. Very, very strong <laughs> blouse game and the lady on the right there. I like that a lot. Um, so, so in 2013, the Italian courts ruled that it's it's probably a missile that shot this down. Um, and all of the the British especially are very, very mad about this because we did the technical analysis on the wreckage and we're like, no, it has to be a bomb it, mm -hmm. because we said it was a bomb. Um, th there's a quote here from an extremely like uh, annoyed British man that's like, I'm sorry, but Italy is a dreadful place to have an aviation accident. If you want the truth, you're less likely to find it there than just about anywhere else in the world. Which I, I'll, implying that there are good places to have aviation. Yeah, yeah well, I was about to say, like, what's a good place to have an aviation? Just, just uh, like uh, falling out of the fucking sky and thinking, at least Memorial. this will be extremely well investigated. I, I like Republic of very large mattress. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, the the one thing I w I would tease out of this as a conclusion is something that we would have learned from this is that like the the technical evidence is rarely neutral, especially on like political questions like this. And so it, it is like it, it's very easy to just be like, oh well, we're scientists, and as such, the scientific evidence says bomb. It may not be that simple, and you do have to look at all of the other factors, like Francesco Casiga in his old age being like, yeah, man, the French shot down the plane trying to kill Gaddafi. Don't know what was up with that. <laughs> that was wild as he's as he's being. Take it off stage of one of those. Um, <laughs> it's like a hook. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and it's like Hillary Clinton at the other end. <laughs> uh, account. I mean, what I, would, account. what I would like to say is that, uh, and if we go to the next slide, uh, the I think there's a there's a good uh, hmm. uh, illustration Who of who's really responsible that? of the <laughs> for all of this. For fuck's um, sake. Uh, I I think. At least in my mind, the fact that everybody is trying to declare it's a missile now, um, in my mind, immediately makes me think that it was the bomb argument from earlier, and that it points always that do opposite of what uh, CIA says. Well, yeah, I mean, the, yeah. I mean, I mean the, the other thing is, like, you you may recall that Gaddafi is no longer is now late of this parish, right? And as part of his uh, his ouster, you saw dudes going into Mukhabarat buildings and just like reading all of the files. And uh, some of that stuff that was released was very damaging, like uh, him just fucking like torturing people on behalf of MI6. Uh, one of the things was the Libyan view of the Ustica massacre, which is, man, they fucking tried to kill Gaddafi. The <laughs> Italian intelligence services tipped us off because I don't know, they just kind of <laughs> like Gaddafi, and what he, else? <laughs> he like diverts to Malta and they shoot down the wrong plane by accident. So, what, well, once to be again, fair, like, if this hmm. is so corrupt, I mean, it's the most corrupt, I was gonna say. like intelligence agency in the world. If if, uh, if there is like a, if there are two threads that you can get from this, it's one is that like you are not immune from like having evidence doctored, and the other is that the Italian secret services are the least competent in the world. But they're designed to be that way because all of the stuff that like. Italy in the 60s, 70s, and 80s was designed to be a puppet of the U.S. foreign, uh, like the U U.S. foreign policy, as was like you know, uh, as was Germany, West Germany, and as sorry, Alice, England has always been since the end of the war. <laughs> yes, um, not even because we had to do anything, but more because like you all are so desperate to break off the NHS and sell it to us, <laughs> you'll just kind of, <laughs> you know, you, you all want to pay $300 for insulin, <laughs> because, uh, <laughs> you know... Because we're um, cucks, yeah, we're cucks. <laughs> I was yeah. going to say it, but I'm going to let you say it. Um, no, um, I love England. Um, uh, anyway, the, the point Why? being... Why? Uh, I, I find England very, uh, very 
full of history and uh, very rich. In, <laughs> Interesting in, from an academic standpoint. Yes. <laughs> very, very rich. Um, I, when I go to England, everybody is, uh, you know, very nice to me because I am, uh, you know, I am a white passing Hispanic person. If that weren't the case, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> but anyway, um, so my, my point being that Italy was designed as was like Turkey and Greece and all these other countries designed to be an extension of the U.S. government's foreign policy aims. And in the process of this, the CIA killed, whether or not you believe that they did this particular instance of, uh, of murder, they killed thousands and thousands of people and engendered an en- environment in which Italians could not feel safe taking a train, taking a plane, getting into their car, going to work, etc. And for that reason... I am deeply, deeply ashamed to, uh, you know, to be an American because we allowed this to continue and not just here, but abroad. But we we did this and allowed this to continue solely so like, you know, Giuseppe can't join a union at the Piaggio Ape mm-hmm. plant, you know, like yeah. <laughs> it's, it's deeply sickening to me that this is like the degree to which the United States went to make sure that nobody could live a comfortable life. Mm. And not not just killing Giuseppe and Sons atomic weaponry to still be able to operate. (laughs) Well Giuseppe and Sons not not just not just Oh destiny. (laughs) Not 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 just killing people or like destroying buildings. Oh no like destroying Destroying the concept of like trust in democracy itself, and also, something like, which is like a specialty of the house currently on on display in Libya and uh, Bolivia. And also yeah. here, yeah. I mean, the the thing is, and and the other thing is, uh, you know, important things to note that this is a golden age for political corruption in Italy because all these people's jobs are basically secure because the CIA would just back them with tons of money, yeah, which which leads to. Which leads to the next era of Italian politics, which is, huh, why is everyone in the pocket of the mob? Right. And also, like, so this is yep. where you get a tangent. And, like, why is the mob still around? Well, because they've been, the uh, American intelligence has been working with them and sending them money for many, many years. Like, you know, like a grandma sending you a crisp $20 bill on your birthday. <laughs> um, and, you know, this is where you get the Tangentopoli scandal and you get Operazione Manipulite. And then ultimately, those people are still in power. Silvio Berlusconi is still active in Italian politics, even <laughs> now, after everything. You know. <laughs> to be fair, that song is a banger. That song has three key changes. Um, so you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know it's good. It's good. It's the. It's the. You know, be, be, how many key changes does this Bella Chow have? It, no, Fuck none. off. It, it, <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. The, it's the. Um, it's the love on top of political Italian songs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, um, but yeah, it's it's. Um, and what I want to what I want to add, just to conclude, at least the the historical analysis of this, is that you should never assume that like you're immune from this simply because you're in like the United States or you're in the UK or you're in like a country that, you know, doesn't have to deal with this. Like why are school shootings allowed to happen at an increasing frequency all across America? Well, it's a justification for us to increase the surveillance state. It is the strategy of tension as applied domestically once we no longer had a country in which to apply it. And you should never ever think even for a second that like, any of this is really by accident. So that's once again, the uh, I'm I'm referring to uh, Robert Paxton's back of the envelope definition of fascism as colonial violence applied to the imperial core. You don't have to like I, I, again another lesson from this. You don't have to be secretly uh, like uh, organizing everything through like a Masonic lodge, although it helps, I guess. Uh, you can just kind of have stochastic violence and stochastic terrorism, where just like a guy goes out and does something terrible, thinks it's his idea, and you're just kind of content to let it happen. Yeah, you just don't. Well, you just don't does. do anything strategically. Not stop. doing yes. stuff. Yeah, <laughs> right. I, I mean, the Joe Biden way. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, as long as they're unionized and you know they're all coordinating with each other when <laughs> they're union, the conspiracy yeah, union. Yeah, pe- but... People planting bombs are workers, and as such, as the professional <laughs> managerial <laughs> class, we we should not condescend to them. And and you know, I like those scabs at Giuseppe and Sons atomic weaponry. <laughs> 
<laughs> Listen, you know, it's uh, it's uh, that's where that's why they've got that old mill in uh, in Graniano. You know, you gotta have the you gotta have the real the bronze cut. You know, oh, astonishing <laughs> amount of continuity there. They built some of the first atomic weapons for the papal states. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that, uh, we're all family here yeah exactly it's a it's an old family business you know my mom my uh, father built atomic weapons his father Lisa, built uh, atomic uh, weapons his my, father nonna, built atomic weapons. my nonna uh, split the atom in her bathtub and ever since then <laughs> we have a proud family tradition of continuing to make nuclear weapons <laughs> Um, Just every time anyone's in the kitchen, somebody is inexplicably <laughs> stirring a huge pot of plutonium. Uh, just like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. like a, like a, like a shaker of parmesan, but it's yellow cake uranium. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna play us out with a fucking drop again. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody touch my spaghetti! I hope the NSA agent listening to this loves your drops. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> they've they've uh, they've recently figured out you can get a better uh, yield if you use Papardella uh, <laughs> <laughs> for, for the PBX. Well, listen, you can't stand the way of progress, butt face. You got to get that DOC PBX. You know, if it doesn't have the ribbon yes. on it, <laughs> you know, if it's not DOC, then it doesn't have the right. It doesn't have the right flavor, and it doesn't have the right terroir. You know. <laughs> anyway, the, the explosive velocity is not guaranteed. Yeah. So. <laughs> You know. <laughs> All right. Here we are at the end. Once again. Yeah. Once again. Next next episode is the Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster. Does anyone Finally. have any commercials? Uh listen to Trash Future. We're all like in quarantine, we're all going crazy. We're spinning off <laughs> new shows. So Milo and Nate are doing uh a Britonology where they like discover a new kind of guy, like <laughs> one of the psychotic dudes that Britain produces. Uh and uh uh Riley and uh, Andrew Law from Boonta Vista are doing uh, uh, a show where they watch every episode of season five of the show Bones for some fucking reason. So <laughs> subscribe oh, to the Patreon. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and mm-hmm. listen to those. Um, and our bonus episode should be up shortly. Oh, I, uh, I, have, a, I have a commercial. Oh. Um, I, I have a commercial, which is a. I would like to give a shout out to my dad, uh, who may or may not be listening to this podcast because I keep badgering him to listen to this podcast, and he liked the uh, the episode on the news. Um, so that's, I know his dad. Yeah. Um, I know I know dad. Dad. <laughs> shout out to my dad. Uh, and also, uh, my other commercial is, uh, you know, uh, I have a podcast that is very infrequently updated because I'm also doing like three DSA projects right now. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's called disastrous house of money and check it out if you want. I, you know, that's fine. It's for fun. I don't oh, yeah. care. And, and follow you on Twitter at Noah Sykes. Yeah. Sykes spelled like psychiatrist, yes. I also, guess. Also, Alice is on the next episode whenever I'm able to release it. Uh, and also join DSA. Um, yeah. Oh, look who's who's that standing by that bridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Bye, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Uh, Stuffing rocks into my pockets. Uh, <laughs> No, I, I, I is moth woman. I, I want you to know. I want you to know. I I had to reverse Google image search the exact JPEG of the Tacoma Narrows bridge that you used. Then I had to go into paint.net and you like cut out just the Alice and shrink it down just small <laughs> enough that no one would notice it <laughs> to get it into the slide. <laughs> incredible, incredible work of sabotage. <laughs> I, in many ways, I am the heir to Operation Gladio. <laughs> <laughs> We're using this one for every subsequent episode. <laughs> the Soviets are going to torch you to death for doing petty vi- uh, vandalism now. Yeah, yeah, yeah wrecking. I, yeah. I, you know, I, that, I'm into that, and I'm okay with that. I, I think that's good. I deserve it. Uh, you know, I am bourgeois. <laughs> I, I am an assistant in Hollywood, meaning I am part of the bourgeois professional class, apparently, even though I make about 30000 a year, which is yeah, nothing. We're all, we're all podcast kulaks here at this point, so... Mm.